Hello, everybody. If it's Wednesday, and very early, apparently, uh, then that must mean it's time for another Battle Tome review. It's Warhammer. Uh, specifically, we're doing Zinch today, so we had to bring in, from across the pond, a couple of experts. We, we, we couldn't just source this out to one. We had to get two. The, we, so we basically, we're, we're taking the Cairo strategy. Two heads are better than one here, right? So joining us on the show again, we're happy to have him back. Nico, what's up, brother? How you doing? Good, thank you. I'm thanks again for having me on. Looking forward to it. Always, it's always a pleasure. Joining us for the first time, a Zinch enthusiast, uh, to say the least. Someone I think uh, you know excited about the 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 changer of the ways. Daniil, what's going on, buddy? How you doing? Hi, yeah, I'm glad to be here. I am very glad to have you, sir. Also, of course, my co-host. He's still here multiple weeks in a row. It's Tom. What's up, buddy? Hello, friends. It's like. It's like I'm a co-host on this show. It's weird. It is like that, yeah. Uh, just so everybody knows, uh, Tyler, give some shout-outs to Tyler. He had a little bit of a little bit of an accident. He's okay, uh, but he was he had to take the week off. He's just he's, he's just recovering. Nothing serious, don't worry. But you know, maybe shout him out a little little happy message on Twitter saying you hope he feels better. Everything's fine. He'll be all right. Uh, it's just uh, he has to he has to get some rest in. I don't want anybody to be too scared or something. He's fine. Uh, this is he, an ex he, he's dying. Send him a message. It's that is not what I said. That is not correct. That is inaccurate. <laughs> uh, no, no, incorrect. All right. This week we are going to talk about the new disciples of Zinch Battle Tome, of course. But first, uh, first up the news. So, so like rumor engine and stuff, right? Yeah, man. It's it's nice thoughts. It's a ball in a, in a stick. Yeah. yeah, you you didn't actually put it up. So now, Vince, it's you have now. the... I can say it now. Oh, is it? Oh, it yeah. is up. Okay. I just started with this inch thing up. Yeah, I know. Because that was the topic. Yeah, it is a ball. Uh, does anybody have any idea what we what we might be looking at? A commander. Well, if you rotate it, is it a flagpole if you rotate it a couple of times? Maybe for, hmm. for um, cities, perhaps, in the future. Or dawn bring a crusades. Yeah, I was about to say it probably is something to do with cities or feels like a city maybe thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like the gravity on that on that uh rod uh sure. is such that I think that it's like I think it's the right direction, right? Because okay. it, it would be weird to have the feather like sticking straight out if it was right side up. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. maybe Unless the wind Wind was wind. Blowing? Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know what to say. Uh, I don't know what to say. It's uh, it's weird. It's weird. It's kind of ornate. It's a thing. Do this do the Stormcast have any uh, wooden pieces in any of the kits? I can't think of a single wooden piece in the entire uh, Stormcast line. No, they they haven't discovered wood. They hammer everything out of metal. Yeah, all of it. All of it's metal. Um, Should we do it with vampires, then? Absolutely. We've come to the conclusion it's clearly just vampires again. We're good. All right, what's next, Tom? Because we got some news. we got we got many, oh, we many do. news. We have real news. Uh, this is one I'm going to start with that I'm excited about. The return of Cursed City. Yep, it's back. He's back. Like, uh, I remember when it was announced that it was not coming back, and I was very sad. But now it's back with an expansion, so it's here now. Yeah, it's been a roller coaster ride. Do um, we think this you, time? Go ahead, Daniel. Do, do, do we think we will get the cities here is actually stay in the game? <laughs> I, I wish I had an answer for you. I, I suppose time will tell. That's not an answer, but it feels like the only thing I could say, Daniel. What I want is more cool heroes, and not just for Soul Blight. But, like, I want to see more cool explorers and people like that. It gives them a chance to to do interesting things with unique heroes. And just because they, they happen to be Cursed City doesn't mean they have to be bad. They could use them to do, like, interesting things and open up a fun build, even if it's kind of a foot hero and utilitous or whatever and not tough. They could still be valuable. Um, Another like, Kato example. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Kato is the ex perfect example, right? He's not overpowered. He's just good. 
Like, he's a good foot hero that actually probably hits, like, something or, or has the utility slash hitting power that, that you would want for that amount of points. Uh, the other example I was going to give was, uh, what's her name? Uh, crossbow girl, uh, Doralia Van Dens, Dur- right? Doralia, yeah. Yeah, right? Like, they can do this. Like, you can have foot heroes that still show up in lists and have competitive play and are interesting and stuff like that. It's just most of them aren't. <laughs> we, we not her Ella. father. Sorry. Her father is not good. But, no, but, yeah. It's, but she is good. <laughs> tale of two, two cities right there, I suppose. Yes. How, how about that confirmation uh, regarding the other Soul Blight models as expansion models? Like... The, they're like, oh, here's you know, like here's the expansion. Just go buy the model. Yeah, sure. That's already sure. been released. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, it's it's what I expected for this first go round because they probably did use some of the models in Soul Blight Grave Lords that would have come here and blah blah blah. I'm sure it's all entangled. It's like if you ever have you ever just like gotten uh, tired after Christmas. <laughs> And you take all the Christmas lights down because you're 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 just upset and you, you don't want to deal with it all. And you wad them up in a ball and you throw them in a box. And then a year later, you've got to put the Christmas decorations back up. And you go to pull those lights out, and it's just a complete tangled mess. That's no, what their release schedule do has to be like right now. I'm responsible, Vince. Is that good how you on do you? Your Christmas. That's their release schedule. It's a National Lampoon's Christmas situation over there with their release schedule. Okay, so. That's awesome. legitimate. That's fair. Yeah. Um, I'm looking forward. Sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm you looking go. forward to converting. Uh, I think Lady Anaka is it into a another Gaunt Summoner or some other Zinch Wizard, depending on what head swap fits. She so. would be a really good Gaunt Summoner. That's a great conversion idea. Mm. Yeah. I like that. Well, you, I like that. You, well, you know, we need to have nine. Like that's the key here. Is well, you need to have eight, nine of them. Eight, sadly. Oh yeah. One. Seraphon. <laughs> yep. You remember Tom from Battletoad Gothic? Yeah. You know, I do. Uh, you know what would solve all that if the if that faction was just deleted? Okay. So um, all <laughs> Zinch. Uh, so we have the updated War Scrolls. Uh, the Zinch uh, Beasts of Chaos scrolls are now aligned. The app got updated in the last hour or so. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, double checked, and all of the beast scrolls, well, all of the Zangor scrolls, right? The the shaman, the enlightened, yep. enlightened of disc, uh, foot Zangor, and skyfires, they all got unified finally after like a couple years. Weird. One yeah, scroll, I'm glad they one set of keywords. Easy peasy. We did it, guys. We got there. And uh, and they finally, well, uh, in the Zinch book. They don't have the Brayherd or Beast of Chaos keywords, but on the app they do now. So, yay. Sweet. Well, that's uh, been a long time in coming, and it's here now. So, um, so that's su- super excited, and it's you know it's in time for our show, which is uh, which is also exciting. It was really nice of them to do the update of that in the app right before the show, so we could give it as breaking news. I thought that was very that was very responsible. It's very friendly. Thanks, GW. Good guy, GW, yeah. there with that one. They're clearly, clearly, uh, you know, working, working it for us. Okay, so here you go. Uh, we also have the new announcement for the Gnarlwood box with the minis. Oh, yeah, boy. Let's talk about them. Boom. Let's talk about the Sons of Velmorn. Uh, yes, please. Uh, uh, so are, is this going to be a, uh, a squad for you, Vince? Is this I don't know, man. I mean, regardless of what it is for me, you're going to see this thing everywhere at, like, Golden Demon. This will be the the choice yeah. uh for sure what is happening over just, here just thinking how to get them onto 25 mil basis to get them as a unit of graveyard it's, it's so <laughs> they're incredible that. yeah what do you think they're on 32s or mo- most of them are on 32s yeah, probably at least the, the one guy work. the big guy looks the even bigger blank. yeah the back the back guy yeah all left yeah, Mr. Yeah, Shield and Sword Guy, he looks like he might be on like a 40 or something. 40. Cr- yeah. yeah. Him on 40, the other on 32s, and then 25s. It could Maybe be like 28. a 28 slash. It could be like three 28s, a 32, and a 40 just to really make your life annoying. Who knows? I mean, it's Warcry. They can just. Uh, or yeah. sorry, Warhammer Underworlds. I apologize. They can just do whatever they yeah. want, right? So who they knows? They don't 
they don't care about those bases. Yeah. <laughs> like Shadow Stalkers. In a hex. Go ahead, Daniel. Shadow Stalkers have basically like all of that yeah. in one yeah. in one unit. Exactly. Uh, the Rottmeyer guys, some of those are in the same way too, which we'll talk about in just a moment. But uh, these guys are great. They're incredible. Uh, I love them. Uh, like, yeah, they're wonderful. This this dude with the foot up on the rock pointing out with his crown and stuff, like A+, plus, solid skeletons. You love to see it. It's good. He reminds, he reminds me of the Lich King from, uh, or the Witch King, sorry, from Hero Quest. Uh, sure. Uh, it's, I, I mean, I think these all look super great, so good stuff. My question is, I mean, I think th- these have been just, like, universally applauded. Mm-hmm. My question is, what does everybody think of the Gnarl Spirit Pack? So this is the other one, the four sort of chaos mm-hmm. guys. Daniil, what's your, what's your take on these, on, on this group? Do you think they're chaos? They look chaosy. Yeah, that, that dog they, they, they could be, like, Secret of Sigma Outrunner or something. I don't know. I have I'm I'm confused on that. Yeah, they have chaosy iconography. This is this is how chaos tends to look with the knee pads and the leather straps and the skulls on everything. I'm just saying it's they they don't have any uh, any good guy iconography on them. I'll say that much. They have a hammer. That is true. <laughs> they do have a hammer, but that hammer does not has like a little weird symbol on the side of it. That's like a little swirly twirly symbol. Um, yeah, I mean, Daniel, you confused by these guys. Nico, what about you? What's, what's your take on them? You like them? Yeah, I, I, I gather they're meant to be like uh, Dark Earth guys. So I was a big fan of the, like, the, the Dark Earth chieftain with the sword and you know, to his side and the, the War Queen that came out later and other similar releases in, in that sort of suite of models. They must be getting to like 10 or so of them. These do look quite sort of extra layers compared to those sort of earlier models um really like the wizard love the pose on the the hammer the hammer dude he is really intimidating um sort of giving me goliath vibes in, in a good way as a necromunda um i really love that pose or in fact maybe it's the orlock guy who has a big hammer in two metal hands that it's reminding me of but yeah he looks awesome um yeah solid yeah they're okay. cool i the only thing i don't love is the uh, is this guy's helm? I hate this helm. Mm. It, this goofy helm is like, it looks like, like he's a uh, muppet. Is it like a warthog head with, but he stuck some antlers into the back of it, or some composite? It's kind of, kind of the feel that I get there. Yeah. Oh no, it's it's an ornamental face, isn't it? Sorry, now it's focused in it. Yeah, but I mean, it's a mask. It's clearly yeah, a mask, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. So, Sorry, was... so what I want to know is, do I <laughs> can I just cut that head off and put a different head on that's going to look cool? Because if so, fine. The rest of the fig is fine. There's nothing wrong with it. It's a completely normal fig, right? Yeah. Um, I like the other three quite a bit. There's the only other little thing that bothers me is I don't like the bone jaw collar on the the big dude. It's too obscuring. Yeah. So, like, if I can cut that off and then replace the head, this one's a winner for me. So, it's and yes, like, I hate old, the predator helm. So, there we are. All right, cool. Yeah, these guys are neat, though. I hope we keep seeing more fun stuff like this. They're killing it with Underworlds over there with these models. Yeah, I don't hate it. Um, it's interesting, like, when I see this and kind of the the other uh, Dark Oath that we've gotten, like, you could really, like, piecemeal your way into a, like, converted army. Sure. Because, like, the guy here could be your Chaos Sorcerer. Um, and there could be some really other interesting com- conversions. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm excited. I, I like this design direction, and I hope that they keep doing it. Mm-hmm. That's where I'm at. Yeah, sure. All right. The problem cool. is Mar- Mar- Marauders was just going to be better anyway. Yeah. Well, well, that's why I said it. A converted army. Of, yeah, you're just getting enough alternates. Marauders. Who's buying regular Marauders anymore? At this point, you have 20 different... You could have 20 unique people in a unit of 20 Marauders. You're good. Between all the different Dark Oaths and everything else that's come out. 40 40 of my uh, Marauders are the Chaos Familiars that come with the original Gorn Summoner. So I've got a set of 40 of those. (laughs) Cheers people up a bit when they they rig the charge. That is a bold move right there to see 
I'm guessing like 10 of those tiny little uh, yeah. wizard dudes come charging in. Yeah. If you are tiny little book. chaos warrior people. Yes. Book. Fish. Yep. yep. Yeah. 10 it fish. Man, it, it makes me want to do that with nerdlings. Just put, uh, yeah. put uh, swords and shields in there in their hands and uh, convert up a bunch of nerglings on 25 mil bases. There it is. 100%. I've converted, I've converted my fish into uh, brimstone cavalry. Nice. <laughs> nice. There's a single brimstone horror just riding the fish. I love Amazing. It. Amazing. Um, moving on, you mentioned Rotmeyer. Uh, the Rotmeyer scroll got updated, so now it's just good. Well, it, it, yeah, I mean, I think it just cleaned up the the concern. There was a bad right. faith interpretation that it caused infinite uh, disease. Uh, disease. Disease. Thank you. Disease points. Sure. Which, like, and that's no. fine. But uh, clearly, clearly, but and that's what I'm saying. Like, the scroll's just good now. Like, it's not broken. It's not like ridiculous. It just it is what it is. And uh, I'm a buyer. At uh, at those points, I'm a buyer. I was a buyer even without the ability, I think, completely. You know, it's just giving some reach to Nurgle beyond their existing sort of, you can take the regular fly, like the, the, the demon flies that have a basic shooting attack you can put a few disease points on, but having a dedicated and literally short range unit to put some depravity and do a bit of shooting is, is really helpful. Really yeah, as I, as I mentioned before the show, I played a game this weekend against a combination of uh, Blight Lords and Rotmeyer, uh, creed and boy was that a living nightmare like that was uh that was a game i mean it was just overwhelming right uh now i was playing uh slaves of darkness and certainly not the most tuned list but i was playing a list that had you know some amount of mortal wound protection on effectively every unit on the table and it just did not matter everybody was just just melting they just a tritting out so yeah well, they're like flies, but better. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, this does lower that the the, the Rotmire being good does lower the stonks on uh, on my my precious plague drones because you get a lot of the yeah, yeah. the shooting power, which was the, which was the advantage to them uh, out certainly, of a certainly. out of a reasonably tough unit. Like that's the trick. It's you know it's five up, five up. They can they're a little prickly porcupine if you try to charge them. That kind of thing. So. Plague drones were, were always good. It was just that uh, cost coils were suddenly became a lot better in the new edition. Right. Yeah. Agreed. All right. What else we got? Um, we did Rottmeyer. Oh, and then uh, that uh, some uh, painting award Golden Demon things happen. Golden Demon is happening this weekend. I've been excited watching all the. I've been excited watching everybody like start to share their stuff that's going to be there. I uh. I can't wait to see uh, what everybody has. Like, it's going to be an incredibly impressive weekend. Uh, and I just, like, some of the pieces I've seen already are incredible. So, yep. All right. Cool. Now, oh, that's the news. Excellent. Uh, all right. Sorry, just looking at some... Uh... Uh, cool. Uh, my my so wife's is your wife still alive? Like yeah. that was that was my go-to question. Yeah, my <laughs> wife's like in the middle should, of a hurricane right now on vacation, so should, I'm just checking. It should we cover right that news piece? Yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. Should we cover she, that news piece? She's fine. how is? Should we have? Should we have her log in and report from the storm? That's what. That's what. That's what I need to know. Oh, uh, they they capture a little video. I mean, it looks like it's you know it's it's a hurricane. It's it is what you think it is, right? It's windy it's and rainy. But yeah. I did a show from a hurricane two years ago. It's fine. You did. You did. All right. Uh, no, they're all good. Okay. With that done, let's talk about some uh, some pick of the week. All right. Daniil, what would you like to share with everybody? Um, yes. I was not really watching anything apart from the Facehammer review of the Zinch book. I've watched it like a hundred times now. Yeah. Just scrolling uh, back, the, start it over. That, that, that's my only pick for this, uh, for this week. It. That is an excellent pick. Absolutely. I will link the Facehammer review down in the show notes. Uh, Russ and Byron did an excellent 
uh, you know, sort of read through and appraisal of some stuff that I thought was, they had some really, really good insights that I thought was, was excellent. Uh, Nico, what about you? What do you want to share with everybody? I managed only only two watches of Face Hammer, but uh, the AUS coach was also really good for getting that initial initial take on the book. It's wonderful. But I was going to share the um, Season of War battle report um, between uh, the Nomad Feastmasters and their rivals, the Gloom Spike Gits, which was a very close and nuanced affair. Very nice. Uh, I have not got a chance to watch yet. It's on my like list of things to watch, but this has been a very, very busy week for me. Uh, so I, I look forward to checking that out. I will link it down in the show notes. Awesome. Uh, Tom, what do you want to share with everybody? Man, you, uh, you robbed my, 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 uh, my coach, right? I was going to, I was going to spruit coach his, uh, his multi-video treatment. So instead I'm going to jump over to two plus tough Doug who did a wonderful, um, fire slayer lore video, the right of life rocks Akshi, um, four days ago. So, uh, I have been in fire full fire slayer mode recently. And so I, uh, um, I enjoyed that lore video. It's a nice kind of tight 15 minutes or so. Um, so I would encourage you to check it out. Very nice. Uh, my pick is for a future thing, uh, which is tomorrow night at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern. I'll be on uh, uh, Mr. Meff, uh, Mr. Meff's channel over on Twitch. I'll link his Twitch channel down below. Uh, myself and Haywo are going to join uh, Meff for the kickoff of the newest season of Rantcast, so it should be a very fun and lively discussion with the three of us, I am sure. So uh, always a good time to hang out with the magical Mr. Mephisto. Uh, all right, so very good. Let's talk about uh, let's talk about some hobby time. Daniil, what's been on your desk, man? What are you what are you working on? Are you are you are you getting more zinch ready? That's the question. I'm not buying any more zinch. I have plenty, but I'm definitely painting it. Yes. Okay. I'm un unpacking all of the boxes that I've uh, previously ordered and uh definitely getting ready all of the all of the flamers, all of the screamers, all of the zangors, everything. Okay. What's first? Like when you got your boxes out, what's the first thing you're gonna put paint on? You wanna put paint oh, on? Oh screamers. Okay. Hundred percent. Okay. In for the screamers. We're getting we're getting a preview of what Daniil thinks the book. I'm excited. All right. Nico, what have you been working on, man? So, so my hobby desk has been moving because I've realized I could rearrange my hobby room to actually put a gaming table in it despite its small size. So just squeezed in a, a, a new size table. Um, and so I've been rearranging stuff mostly for that. But I have been doing some uh, converting and building of, of Zinch models as well. And I've been scoping out some of the 40K uh chaos cultists and such from the fourth uh the, the new chaos space marine range which may make some really interesting sort of chaos spawn or um sort of mix the intermingle them with some um uh, chiric acolytes plus some of these marauders with some some weapon swaps and crossbows or some magic casting hands to uh, make a more interesting unit so I'll give that a go I love it. Yeah, the the like possessed. I assume is what you're looking for, right? The the new yeah. possessed for potential like spawn. Three, three possessed things which are basically spawn sized, and then you get like five cultists and that, and you get like a ten box of the uh, cultists. And I, I already have plenty of Kyrix, but I'm gonna sort of intermingle some of those to to vary it to make it yeah the, like a city army that's become that has revealed its true colors. I would say nice. Yeah, some of those cult like possessed cultists are really freaky models. So they are yeah. they are great chaos spawn choices, especially with all of the turning enemies into spawn. Some of them do look like like literally it was a person that just got warped by magic into some horrific thing. Uh yeah. so they're they're pretty perfect. Yeah, it's that's a great pet. It's a great pick. Great pick. Uh Tom, who had to step away for a moment, is working on Fire Slayers, so he's full on. I already know that because he's working on it for uh, for our upcoming team tournament here in or, or uh, two player. No, it's not full doubles. team or whatever. Oh, yeah. Doubles. Yes. Uh, here in do, 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 three weeks, three weeks, let's say. That sounds right. Sure. Why not? 
Uh, so the the time crunch is on on Tom as always. Fortunately, my army's already ready to go. Uh, for myself, uh, the time has finally come to get everybody uncomfortable because it's we're painting uh, we're painting up sexy rat warlord lady. Uh, so this is my my vermin lord, and uh, she's you know she's gonna make people feel things that and and awaken <laughs> things in people that they're not ready to feel. So I'm excited about that. So she's that coming along, cool. still got a fair amount of work to do, but I've just spent a lot of the past couple of days doing all these rocks that are sticking out of her because uh, she has a bunch of warp stone oh, nice. yeah, sticking yeah. out of her. Wonderful. So, yeah, but she's she's coming right along uh, and her head obviously isn't attached. She does have a head normally. It's just separate. It's sitting right there on the desk, actually. Right there. There it is. Um, okay. <laughs> So, uh, it's just so heavy and big, it covers up a lot of her fake. Um, all right. With that, Tom, I told everybody what you're working on. It's just Fire Slayer stuff. It's Fire Slayers! Yeah, Yay! we, we, we rawr, know. Rawr. <laughs> More Magnodoths, yes. Perfect. Well, but it's not, it's not just Magnodoth, he's converted. See? Oh, nice, yeah. It's the father, yeah. Is is putting a magnet on something, converting it, is that what we're calling yes. it? Yes, because that's not normally normally the father is is straddling mm -hmm. the the uh the saddle. It's not the platform. The platform is for the rune smiter. I know you don't understand these distinctions, Vince, because you don't build any of these models. I understand that. <laughs> they but all for look those the same that are fire slayer players, they'll see this and go, Oh, that's a father on a platform, not on a saddle. I'm sure they'll be very excited. The three other potential Fire Slayers players in the world will really love that. It's great. Um, the four of you will continue to keep that entire faction alive, so it's very exciting. Okay. Yeah. Gentlemen, let's talk zines, shall we? Uh, it's time for a change. Change you can believe in. Uh, the Fate Master, the Changer of the Ways, uh... The guy who has a lot of plans and they don't seem to ever really manifest. Uh, what is it with blue people and super long-term planning that collapses at the last moment? Uh, in many ways, Zinch is the apocalypse. I mean that like the X-Men villain of the Warhammer universe. Uh, thousands of years of planning torn apart by a bunch of morons in a few minutes. So, good job, as always, blue people. But... We've got a new book on our hands, and I'm I'm uh, pretty excited about it. I, I think it uh, it came out pretty good. There's some some clearly some some things here that I'm not as thrilled with, but I think for the most part I would give this a positive. That's that's the initial. There's the quick review, but we're gonna go around the horn on this. I'm gonna hit my summary, and then I want to go to each of you, and I want to pull your your thoughts both about did I did I nail anything? Did I miss anything in your your forty thousand foot view of the book? Okay, so here's my summary. Uh, overall, I think it's very similar to the previous incarnation. And by that, what I mean is is it still very much feels like Zinch. Previous Zinch felt like Zinch. This still feels like Zinch. We didn't need as big of a rewrite of the sort of thematic functionality as what we did with Nurgle, right? Where they just didn't really feel like you were playing Nurgle, like Corn needs. Uh, Corn needs like a, a top to bottom rewrite that'll make all of the Johnnies in the world very very sad uh, because it should it should switch over and be a, a high Timmy army. Uh, Zinch to me now reads more like a mixed arms force. Uh, it has very high mobility. It has powerful magic. It has some shooting options. It has some combat that's it's weaker but it's present and you kind of need to use all of it to win. You're going to want to be active in all of the phases. Uh, to achieve victory, you need to. You can't just. You can't just win solely through the hero phase. Uh, I mean, I'm sure there's a build that will try that and that will do that, and I think that's probably, maybe still viable. But the the sort of best path to me, just first blush, seems like it's playing in more phases than just the hero phase. Basically, I think movement positioning is the story of this book. It's absolutely essential that you're like planning a turn ahead as to where you are, where you're, you think your opponent's going to be, where you're drawing them to, which feels very apropos 
for Zinch. Like, you need to, like, lay traps and be thinking, where do I need to be on the next turn in my next hero phase to set up the next thing? Very Zinchy in the play style there. Uh, and, you know, my ultimate read is some heroes are still losers. Uh, but I, I think there's actually quite a few loser heroes. But you're going to have still many hero heavy forces let's not say they're all bad don't get me wrong i think there's some real standouts in here i'm excited to talk about uh but you're gonna still see some hero heavy forces pushing magic right pushing fate uh fate points and but i think there's a lot of other play styles there for experimentation as well all right daniel i'm gonna start with you what do you think of my summary what do you is there anything i missed what do you, what do you think of the book Forty Thousand feet i for the most part agree with you that you need to be active in more than one phase now, because the the standard build of doing like fifteen thousand mortal wounds in, in the hero phase got slightly weaker, and we'll discuss that later. But um, I think combat actually got increased quite a bit, and there are some actual options for uh, combat now, whether whereas before there really wasn't. So. That's really good. And I think shooting and combat is around the same now because they slightly nerfed shooting okay. for the most part. Um, so I, I think those two are equal, but you can build forces like based on one or the other, or both, if you want. All right. But yes, um, mixed arms is the way to go, I think, as well. Right on. Nico, what's your read? I agree with... Uh both of you. Uh, I'm broadly positive. Um, I love the streamlining, both the quantity of the rules and the writing of each individual rule is is, is much more streamlined. Um, there is no radical reinvention, as some of us may have hoped. I guess there was so much invested in Destiny Dice, you know, the Silver Tower game, you had the 2017 version, the 2020 version, so they kept it, understandably. I had thought maybe Arcanites would get a bit more of that sort of infiltrating into the city's mechanics and so on. To sort of reflect the silver uh, the silver shard narrative or the sort of the Cato um, as EQR stories in the novel there, um, but there there are some really nice narrative touches as well. So the spawn mechanics that we'll come on to and the silver tower related mechanics for the gaunt summoners, um, it does feel better balanced than twenty twenty battle tome. I sort of hesitate to say slightly nervous. Um, yeah, <laughs> I had the same read. I was like, this feels like it's in the right place power wise. It's not like when I read the, the previous battle tome and I was like, well, this is busted. This is clearly bent straight out of the gate. This is bent. Yeah. But I, but, but with Zeech, you never know. I'm like, is there something I'm missing? Is there some combo, some, some sideways angle? Somebody's going to shoot that I'm not going to, that I'm not seeing here. Right. Staring you in the face. Probably. I mean, yeah, exactly. Exactly. That means that, that I remember the Warhammer world heat. Heat one, which was really the moment when we um, we finally handed over the sort of better balanced ba better balanced game baton to forty uh, to forty k, and then <laughs> re relatively quickly the succubus handed it back. But um, <clears throat> sorry, you're all right. Yeah, Tom, I, what's your? Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Daniel. Go ahead. Uh, uh, like the first time that book came out, the second one, uh, I took like the, the weekend it came out. Well, the one after. I took like 18 flamers and six exalted flamers and just killed like a thousand points every first turn. Yeah. Sure. And one on one day, I was like, "Yeah, nice. This is this is great." <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Tom, what's your read? I mean, it's fine. No, uh, I uh, the you know I I think that it is like I agree with a lot of everything that's been said. I think that it has a lot of the tech that you would expect um destiny dice are still here um and uh some of the egregious stuff has been removed um but i think that there's going to be some interesting combos and i you know i think about like i know that a lot of some people have like poo pooed the gaunt summoner like stuff but um there's some neat uh there's some neat tactics uh to be hiding there amongst the uh the gaunt, gaunt summoner silver tower stuff so um, yeah i've gotten two test games in so far with this i did get to get it on the table twice uh yep. once against nurgle fly heavy army and once against uh techless lrl 
I wanted like I was like, well, let's play against the sort of worst magical conditions you could possibly run up against, right? Which is sort of having this spell. It was Zytrek techless spell domination yep. type of thing, right? But and, he's generating all the fate points for you. <laughs> well, you could, that, which is fine because you don't generate any. Is what ends up happening right. because they right. shut you down pretty hard. Uh, like you generate very few. I think in the first two rounds, I cast two spells. Uh, and but Teclas, sure, he was on a tear, no doubt about it, right? Um, and and the rest of his boys. Um, now that being said, I the way I had built that particular army was had good problem removal tech, and so I was able to through other phases lift Teclas off the board by turn two, and then suddenly the the warp fire just rolled over the elves, and that was it, right? It was that once you remove that him, he's a linchpin, everything falls apart, right? That's That yeah. becomes the end of it. Um, so it was a really interesting matchup. The flies was was where the mobility thing really clicked for me because I had to be... They're, they're mobile, but you're still way... I was still way more mobile. And mm-hmm. so I had to be mm-hmm. constantly playing the positioning game like smarter than what they could react to and stuff like that. So they're both good games. Um, and, you know, won both of them. So that was a good vote i guess of confidence so there we go those are two I'm going that mixed arms uh theme yeah exactly uh yeah one that the techless win was through a combat trick and the 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 mm-hmm. nurgle win was a lot through mobility and you know being able to shoot yeah. and, and just do the right damage where i needed to just to push just push in little ways all right what was the list you tried what was the list i tried well i did t- i ran two different lists um so the first one was like a superhero heavy power pair kind of list um, where I tried like just a, a wide selection of, of heroes with a bird uh, with like a war chicken here who's on screen right now backing it up uh, and really just about kind of uh, always having a lot of different magic options, you know, kind of going across the board. Um, I did use the Fate Master in that to try to bubble out with people and things of that nature. Uh, and then I ran six Skyfires. The only thing that was the same, I think, in both lists was I did use the six Skyfires and the Gaunt Summoner on disc in both lists. So, yeah. um, I actually have fallen deeply in love with six Skyfires, I will say. Um, mm-hmm. those guys were MVPs both games. They did so much. I think when people read them, but we'll, we'll get to them. I think when people read them, they, they, they read like they're not as impressive sort of because of their number of shots and stuff. But those guys were, uh, they do work. They were the postal service, man. They delivered. Cool. Every time, quality, definitely. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It was it was just a pure quality play. So, um, I mean, you have to support them and yada yada, but we'll get there. All right. <clears throat> so let's start out with some allegiance abilities. Uh, much of this is going to be very familiar to people who have any familiarity with uh, with Zinch. Uh, the new thing here to talk about is arcane armies. Uh, which is you get to start the game with one of your three endless spells automatically cast on the table with you. Okay. Uh, and I should state, if you have multiples of them, you could you could choose, obviously, as the first battle round is beginning. So if you do happen to take multiple, you can adjust your choice accordingly. Uh, but on the board. And also importantly, it cannot be dispelled in the first battle round. So it's it's stuck there. They can't get out of it. And it sets up as per the described effect for that spell. Um, it's all triggering after you've received your starting command points, but before the first turn. So a uh, very, very excellent timing. You know exactly what's happening, what the priority is. Yeah. Yep. It's sort of the best timing of the thing. Um, I think two out of their three spells are quite solid. Uh, hmm. So... One of them doesn't really land for me, but maybe I'll, someone will change me on my mind. Uh, you do still, uh, John Brock, yes, you still have to pay for the spells. Like, they still have to be in your list um, as a thing. So you're still paying points for the thing. Uh, but, I mean, I, I would probably always have at least one of these in my list, is what I'll say, is my take. Uh, just because I've come to fall in love very deeply with one of them at the points cost. But, all right, let's go... So then I'll just quickly hit the other things, and then we'll talk about the general allegiance abilities. They still have Destiny Dice. It's still nine of them. They still work on these things. It's the things you think they work on. Casting, unbinding, dispelling, run, charge, hit, wound, save, uh, damage, characteristic, and battleshock rolls. 
certain things can be modified, can't be, they can't be modified unless there's some reason they should still be, like rend or the model slain, and so on and so forth. All cleaned up rules text. Great. A plus work. Very clear. Good stuff. Um, but they work like Destiny Dice work. The locus of change is still there, so your demon units, if they're wholly within 12 of a demon hero, are neg one uh, to be hit in melee, and you still have change covens, which are the covens. It's just your sub-factions. Okay. Cool. Daniil, what do you think of this of this stuff? Are you happy? Are you sad? Where, where's your general feeling? What do you think of arcane armies? I think there's only one spell that's going to be in every list. Okay. I don't think any others exist. So, uh, yeah. I, I think the others two are just not, not worth talking about. Um, maybe if the cogs got nerfed, one is worth something. But at this point, I think it's sigil, cogs, and portal in every list I build. Okay. Mm. Fair. Maybe, maybe if I want to be spicy, bridge. Okay. All right. Nico? Yeah, on Arkin Armies, yeah, the, the timing is, is spectacular. It's just when you want. Um, and I think it does add some, some other angles, like when you can sort of summon this rather than using the, the sigil to putting the sigil out, you could potentially put something down just to be a physical obstacle uh, if they're going first. Uh, you know, they may have thought they could charge you with the cabbage or with some other big scary monster, but then well, they can walk through and in the spell they can't put the end their base on it basically so it can be a physical obstacle which is neat um i'm a bit more positive on the other two endless and sort of one depends which command trait you take but as we'll come on to but if you do put the sigil out early then you can't use the plus nine inch range to put it out further so there's a possible trade-off there um, that would allow them to potentially unbind it and so on. So there's there's lots of interesting decisions there. It's great. It's very zinch. Um, so yeah, I'm really positive on uh, on arcane armies. Uh, it adds a lot. It's it's a good thing that it doesn't let you put any end the spell of all oh, yeah. the brick ones. That probably goes without saying. Uh, agreed completely. Like yes, thank you for limiting it to the correct set to this set of yeah. three. It's constrained. We know what it is. It's controlled. Yes, the correct choice. Tom, and really. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Nico. Final point. Really good for teams because you can potentially have a Zinch army with their three ones, and then they can sort of toolbox use one of the three uh, while not using up, you know, portal cogs, etc., etc., purple sun, etc., etc., all the other ones that you might want to put in Zoomneth army or Seraphon army or other casting powerhouse. Okay. Nice. Tom. Yeah, I don't. It's funny. I like the trait. Um, I like what it does. I like what it communicates. I actually don't like, I know that everybody's big on burning sigil. Um, I don't hate the simulacrum. Okay. Um, Caleb just came out in the comments supporting demonic simulacrum as well. He's, he's, he seems hot on it. So I think, I think Caleb knows what's up. And I mean, the reason why like I'm pushing simulacrum is because uh, like if it's going down basically pre game, so even if they go first, before they move, you've pushed a uh, simulacrum 21 inches up into their line. Um, because it's going to set up 12, move 9, and it's a big base. It's like, as someone who is as legitimately cut off charge, you know, lines with endless spells, like, it's going to do that work. Um, it's not like, it's not going to be something that you're really going to, like, it'd be amazing if it was all units within X inches. It's not. It's the nearest unit. But um, because of what it's doing, because of the charge paths, because of the size of the base, I actually don't hate it. I actually okay. think that it's a, it's a really interesting tool. Um, and because they can't get rid of it, they're just stuck with it. Right, yeah. The, the, the can't be dispelled in the first battle round is a significant thing, for sure. Uh, yeah. All right, and it, cool. And it, and it can't, be, can't attempt to get rid of it. Yeah. yeah, for future, for something that's coming up. Yes, yes. All right. Uh, okay. Of course, we still have our Fate Point Summoning. Uh, it still works like you think it works. Spells that are cast and aren't unbound add Fate Points. Great. Good. Yep. Sounds good. You can you can summon stuff. It's a thing. Um, 
I love that we continue to make blue horrors and brimstone horrors the same summoning cost for just like reasons because 10 is just the bottom and we can't find there's no number higher than 10 we're gonna put blues at so it's just like whatever it's fine they're just the same it is it, literally because they were um summoned for blue horror points or brimstone horror points sure. in mm-hmm. the first battle tome, and then no one bothered to look at this table ever again nope <laughs> it just we're just we got it down once and we were like job's done nailed it we know let's not investing. ever go back to this I sent yeah. off to the FAQ at least three times. So. <laughs> no luck yet. I'll try again. I mean, the, the Seraphon summoning table still has the um, Salamanders at their original summoning point as well, which is uh, interesting. It's just been getting a better and better deal every uh, every update to the points or whatever. Yeah, and they, and they can summon multiple units in one phase whereas mm. i believe we none of the none of the chaos gods can i think they're all locked at one per phase but uh, do you often, know how we fix that the beast can yeah i was gonna say beast can yeah Be- yeah the, yeah the, the four gods can't yeah yeah do you know how we fix that though just get her to seraphon <laughs> Tom, <laughs> tom's on a mission here uh <laughs> We still have our, our, our legions of chaos in here with coalition units with two in every four being slaves to darkness uh, that have the mark of chaos keyword. Those units must be given the zinch mark of chaos keyword. Uh, and then one in every four units can be a coalition unit from beasts of chaos uh, that does not have the zinch keyword. Those units gain the zinch keyword. So there we go. Okay. It's worth mentioning that um, none of the coalition units gain uh, the other legions abilities. As per the FAQ, they, they right. just put it all in. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then finally, transformed into spawn, which is, uh, you know, um, almost more of just a clarification on how a constant thing is going to work, since this is a sub theme in the book, more than yeah. it is a standalone rule itself. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead, Danielle. What do you got? The, the burning sigil works differently, even though they literally created rule. They created another one in the burn sigil, which is sure. interesting. Well, we'll, we'll talk about the the sigil. I, I I think I have a different interpretation, but but we'll we'll see. We'll see. We'll get there. So much endless spell discussion. Uh, mm-hmm. But effectively, if a model is transformed into a spawn, you can add one Zinch Chaos spawn unit that has one model to your army. Set up the Zinch Chaos spawn unit within one inch of the model that has been transformed, and then remove the transform model from play. So okay. Cool. And then they have the little clarification of it doesn't count as being slain for the purposes of Battleshock rules and can't be returned if you're allowed to bring things back. Which is huge. Not just from the Battleshock perspective, but also from the perspective of there are certain things that you don't want to slay because then they come back to life. Like that's still uh, like uh, Engines of the Gods with their artifact or uh, Durthus with their, with that artifact mm-hmm. to come back onto you up. So if they're not slain, then none of those things trigger. So yeah. there is also there is also a discussion of what happens if the opponent's general is transformed into a spawn. Mm-hmm. Does it still exist Do, for for purposes of of everything that triggers off the general? Is that the concern? Yeah, it feels yeah. like they really they really run with the narrative here, which is wonderful. Uh, and I think they they sort of put down the guillotine and said, okay, this far but no further. So they they. So like it doesn't seem like the if your own general turns to a spawn, then he's still the general, and you your general isn't slain, so you don't get the plus two to heroic action, the heroic action to get more CPs, but you still have a general on the table. But I think the they stopped the analogy probably for your opponent's general, um, and probably the spawn doesn't get like the command traits and artifacts and so on, though that would be kind of hilarious. So just run yeah, around like a magic sword, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, maybe well, maybe Master, Master Magic for that. Master Magic spawn running around, being like arcane tome, pew pew spells. Yeah, that. Would well, be we know that it's we know that it's not the same general because yeah. it says the spawn becomes the general. Right. Um, so the, when he items traits and all that, definitely do not carry over. So it, if yeah. this rule does count, none of that would actually uh, affect the the new general. That said. The rule is for your general, which is in mm-hmm. reference to the faction controller, because that's where these abilities sit. Um, so it probably should not affect enemy generals. Probably. Yeah, in which case, the opponent's general is not slain, so they wouldn't get plus two, but he's not on the table. So he wouldn't get CPs as well. 
So yeah, it's uh, lose lose, which is great. It kind of reminded me of, of do you remember the the original Marathi War Scroll, where she was sort of going to you know, She Hulk form, uh, and it would you'd replace the little model with the big one. Yeah, sure. And like mm -hmm. there are all those questions, like, well, if she's got Mystic Shield on her, if she's got other buffs, if she's got debuffs, you know, do those yeah. carry over to the um, here to the spawn? Um, so yeah, lo lots of interesting discussions on that. I yeah, think well, we'll... in this one. Oh, good, good. Uh, I think uh, in this one is probably not going to be the case because it's a new model. It's a right. new unit. So yeah, every time we've seen this in the past, it's it's in general uh, no uh, uh, threnidist non-leaders can't be generals, but in this case, it's just saying yeah, he's still there. He's your general. He just can't issue commands, right? Um, and a bit you would override that that general principle anyway. So right. Yeah, I mean, I think that what we've seen every time is this is that when you have a replacement model, the replacement unit, the replacement whatever is happening, right? Because there's lots of unit replacing that goes on. Mm -hmm. It is a new thing, and it just counts as a new version of that thing. Like, it doesn't carry over any of its past things and so on and so forth. That's been how we've generally seen that ruled on lots of different unit but choices. Alariel doesn't get her once per game ability back when, when she comes back, for example. Right. Recent right. one. Yep. Okay. Let's talk command traits. Uh, these are divided into uh, Arcanite heroes and demon heroes. Uh, and as usual, instead of just going and reading everything, we're gonna we're gonna talk favorites. Daniil, what's your? Do you have a pick on the Arcanite? First of all, which one of these do you favor as your general? And what? And then, do you have any any hot picks that you like on the Arcanite list or the demon list? I'll, I'll cycle back and forth between them. I think Arcanites positive demons not very good. Okay. Um, I th I have two picks that I will always take. Okay. Well, one of them. I understand. If I could take two, I would take two. Like I would sacrifice all the artifacts to take two of these. <laughs> um, it's uh, Cult Demagogue and uh, Arcane Sacrifice. Those two are just amazing. Yeah. But let's talk Cult Demagogue. Now keep in mind this is on the Arcanites, the mortal people, because you and I read this. Your immediate thought is going to be, I want to put that on a bird. I think that's just right. what's going to happen. Because everything would be doubles all the time. But that's not how it works. So we're all clear. Right. just want to get it out of the way to, to squash anyone's hopes. This is the Arcanite mortal table thing. Okay, here we go. Wizards only, if the casting roll for this general, or a uh, uh, casting roll, sorry, uh, is a double, the casting attempt is successful and the spell cannot be unbound regardless of the roll. In addition, you receive two fate points instead of one. So, if you pop the double, which is a on you're rolling two d six, it's about a seventeen percent chance every spell you cast. Uh, not only does it auto resolve on on un, un, unbindable, but it also gives you two fate points. So, cool. Okay, good stuff. I think I think we can all see the value there. Anyone disagreeing with this call? It's a great it's a great ability. Yeah, I will mention. It goes, it goes, sorry. I will mention which units I think this is the best on uh, mm -hmm. when we come to those units. Absolutely, yeah. We're, we'll, we'll pair them up as we're going through. And then Arcane Sacrifice, Wizards only. At the start of your hero phase, you can cause one mortal wound to a friendly Zinch unit within three inches of this general. Just Zinch, just keyword Zinch. So anybody counts, anybody with that keyword. Uh, if you... If you do so, until the end of that phase, add nine inches to the range of all spells successfully cast by this general. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Um, very much, Zinch still often has the problem. Like you mentioned, Portal in your list. There's been lots of attempts to break out of the 18-inch kill box, right? Um, Zinch has classically been a very mid-range army. Uh, and the 18-inch kill box is real. It's like somebody knows they can generally sit at 18.1 inches and often just be immune to your army or the vast majority of what you're going to do or what you can you, you know, sort of capably hit them with. Uh, this very much changes the, the math on that. Portal, of course, classically already did. This is another uh, step in that direction, right? It was already in the previous book, but in the previous book, you were forced to to take uh, the the obvious well the the cult specific coven specific uh, right. traits and artifacts. So now that you don't have to, it's amazing. Uh, I was actually considering in the previous book not taking a coven to take this trait because it's just so good. Right. Yep. 
Absolutely. Uh, and by the way, I completely agree with those two. Uh, the only other one that I'll give a shout out to that I did, I did play with this in one of them, uh, one of the games I tried it just to see if it was worth anything. Um, I tried Nexus of Fate just to see if I liked it. The, as I, I, I played a, a sort of destiny dice juicing, refilling, uh, skew in one of the two armies that I played and I found it to be okay <laughs> because it's roll a dice and replacement. It's not adding one obviously and so right. most of the time I was just rolling and I was be like, sure, that two is now a four. I guess that's slightly better. Like that's what most of it amounted to. So it's cute, but it doesn't level it doesn't rise to the level of the other two. But if it was adding a dice, it would be really good. Yeah, sure. Sure. I think even if it was on a four plus you add a dice, it would be better. Yeah. Three Agreed. plus would be nice. <laughs> All right. So I agree, those two were big standouts for me, 100%. Uh, they are both good, uh, both feel in the realm. They they change the math on how you can work. It's fun. I, yeah, A+. Plus. Uh, and somebody said uh, you can use your Destiny dice to make cult uh, demagogue uh, work. And yes, you, you could. You could just set the, the doubles, absolutely. Yeah, I will mention that combo when we come to it. Um, uh, the oh, other one, yeah, go ahead. sorry, please. The other one I would um, shout out if someone doesn't want Arcanites in their list, uh, I would either take Master Magic or Demon Spark just to get three fate points. It's like it's okay. In uh, some lists, gets you to ten horrors better, faster. It's not bad. Yeah. Uh, I mean. I agree. The somebody said it in the chat, and I agree with it. The the Zeech Demon General command trait is called Master of Magic. You'll find it in the Core Rules Universal command trait section. Uh, no. I, I wish that wasn't the case, but yeah, you're right. I mean, Demon Spark is like the only one that that I would that I would look well, at. Um, and even then, know, like it's bad. bad. Like Demon Spark could read. It, you know, you start the game with three fate points, but as it's written, you could still lose your dude. Sure, before you use it, yeah. Before you use it, like, yeah. The counter counterplay. The cool demagogue can give you that turn one because you use destiny dice, yep. and give you unbindable spells and potential to get more fate points over the course of the game. So it's like, I, yeah. And and, and 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 yeah, yeah. It's, right. It's it gives you uses for like two twos in your fate dice, right? Dodging you know, stuff some. like that 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 you're often not going to have use for those low like those low non one one numbers. Well, and, other than and some shot. measure some measure of protection against miscast as well. Um, sure, not yeah. total protection, but you basically you will take the d three mortal wounds. It is a miscast. You can't cast any more spells, but the spell that you did roll the double one for does go off because that will override the core rule on the miscast, which is even that is is nice value. You know how bad a miscast from Arathi or other wizards can be. Yep. Okay. Uh let's talk artifacts. Uh so uh once again Daniil, I'm starting with you here, buddy. Again, they're divided by the way for everybody into Arcanites and Demons. Uh what is the obsession with this army? I, like this is just a general question for the universe, not specifically for you, Neil. What is the obsession with this army and magical melee weapons? <laughs> this has got to be the least melee force that that is printed, right? And of the four of the four main chaos gods, this is the least melee of them, right? I think that's fair to say. That's like thematically, conceptually, execution wise, it's the one that has the least combat focus. And yet, <laughs> this these two charts are just like, do you want a cool magic sword? And it, no, no, I didn't. Why do you keep trying to give these to me? So at any rate, sorry, just a just a nit that I'm picking there. Uh, but at any rate, Daniil, what what's your what's your takes here? What do you like? At least they did deleted half of the melee weapon ones. <laughs> just delete <laughs> of the one. Good, good. Um, some of them they improved. One of them improved by making it any weapon, which is great, right? 
uh, Secret Eater used to be only a melee weapon. Now it's any weapon. It's like, nice. Thank you. <clears throat> That's good. It's not a bad one. Um, if I would, if I was to pick one, it would be the Eternal Shroud. I think that one is the best out of the bunch. Yep. Um, but also, uh, I don't think um, if I would had one artifact, I'm taking none of these. Okay, you're just taking the tome. It's the tome. Yes, it's just tome. It is the tome. I mean, that's that's absolutely worth saying, is that your first artifact with this army is probably Arcane Tome almost every time, just because more more casts on more people is good. There are lots of really good targets for the Arcane Tome in this army, a couple that are true standouts. Uh, yeah, so... But then your second magic item, if you're going to go that... If you, if you build into that... I agree, Eternal Shroud. So I used Eternal Shroud in one of my games and loved it. Absolutely loved it. Like I was constantly getting in the in the fate skew. This was one of the artifacts in the fate skew, and man, it was great. Uh, you know, being able to just basically a third of the destiny dice that I burn off coming back was uh, fantastic. I can't complain about that at all. It was. Uh, I went on a hot streak where I got like four or five in a row, hit the five up, and it just felt like this resource is endless. I'm never gonna run out of these things. So yeah, it's it, it can be super good. Uh, I will also say if you uh, the I tried the the nine eyed tome as well just to get the full reroll casting dispelling and unbinding basically master of magic but for all your stuff and in artifact form and that was also fine. It was fine. I would I, think... I would just add sorry I would just yeah add no, go ahead something. go ahead on the arcane tome it also unlocks one of um, Vince's favorite things which is one of the uh, sub faction sorry, faction battle tactics is casting three spells yep. successfully. So Arcane Tome is one route to doing that on a two-cast wizard. Um, there is one named character who is a three-cast cast wizard. Guess who it is? Um, but other than that, you're going to need an Arcane Tome, well, or, or possibly some other way of getting an extra spell to, uh, to hit that battle tactic, which is very tempting. Um, I'm very tempted by both, both the demon ones, the, nine, the, the ones you mentioned, uh, possibly you could use the the ogroid with the time slip pendant as a sort of interesting melee threat, maybe coming out of a silver tower. But that's st strictly if you're going down a sort of. Yep. Oh, sorry, I've stolen Tom's one. Um, no, no, if, it's good. No, it's good. If you're going down a um, sort of, you know, expert conquerors, bounty hunters, lots of drops, MSU type list, and you've got a, a reserve via a silver tower. Sorry, via a gaunt summon a silver tower. You could have that ogroid come in. From reserve, guarantee the charge with destiny dice, and then you can fight twice. You can bunker bust his way into a castle. Nico, may I improve that idea? Go for it. Just take Loch on. Choo choo. <laughs> choo choo yeah, him we, up we and can't then have sticks then... in the spells anymore. This is the problem. It's fine. Yeah. You, just take, you take this idea in a 1k list, and it's fine. <laughs> oh, oh, in 1k, this list, this army would be oh, so scary at that level. <laughs> or double. I love it. I love it. Yeah, yeah. I I think, I think you 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 hit all the ones I would pick on. But yeah, go ahead. Yep. And there's one more I would uh, stress, and I think Demon Heart is actually really good. Okay. Wow. All right. Why? What do you love about Demon Heart? I like the just guaranteed mortal. Okay. There's just some number up? between one and five mortal wounds. Yeah, but you stack it with a. Uh, um, What's it called? Arcane okay, Bolt. Okay, Bolt. And you just come in and you just snipe it. It's like or nice. movement sixteen or yeah. Okay. No, it, yeah. It's, and normally those sort of ones per game ones in other battle tomes are like on a two up this happens. Yeah, sure. Three, mm -hmm. Even even though it's once per game. Mm -hmm. So the fact this mm -hmm. is you know guaranteed and even it's not even a D three, it's you know, you know exactly the number that's going through before their ward save. So Okay. Solid choice. We're gonna pour one out for the uh the beacon of mutability. <laughs> mutability which used to be the aura that was mm -hmm. a against range attacks as well now all of it is just on uh melee attacks and only on demons it's always only been on demons but poor thing like it was just such a heavy hitter before and now it's just not like i went through and looked at every war scroll just hoping just hoping <laughs> that i would find that one thing that i could like 
partner up with the gaunt summoner and pop them out and have the aura and then i'm just like nope it's not there's there. like sorry, one way you could okay go ahead go ahead neil i think a unit of nine screamers with like a flux master or something with this might be a good idea because he gives them minus one to be hit as well and plus one to wound pretty decent two stews yeah but so here's the question is it worth that Versus just using a fate master who does this already for everybody, and that's the but difference. He's not, that the, he's not a demon, so he doesn't provide the the, the locus. He, uh, it's true, he doesn't provide the lo the locus. Ooh, but like, but the plot, but he provides the plus one to wound on all units, both mortal and demon. Uh, he and has shooting. the high mobility. Say what? And shooting, right? Yeah. Like, and he has yeah. the high mobility. Like, I just. I'm just sad. Just a yeah, quick one I, on I keywords. Agree. Just a quick one on keywords. Uh, the Arcanite ones, you might have thought that the Gaunt Summoner is still Arcanite, but apparently not. So that is curious. He was kicked out of the yeah. order. He's a demon he now, is, full on. Yeah, he's a demon, so he can take the, the full rerolls, which is interesting with his plus one on the war scroll. Yep. So, which is who yeah. I put it on when I took him. Yes, it was, which was pretty great. So, very, very interesting, that. He is a lore master of fate, though, not demon one. So Correct. he can take a demon <laughs> spell. Yes. And a lore yes. of fate. That dude has. Uh, we're we're going to talk about him very soon, but that dude has been A plus for me. I am I am in love with Gaunty. I'm glad we kicked him out of the mortal side. Like, you're a weird, unknowable being who lives in a spaceship, and you don't have eyeballs on your head. They're stretched out over some kind of weird pieces of metal sticking out of the side of your face. You're not immortal anymore. I'm sorry. Like we've gone beyond that. This is you're in Cenobite territory over here, man. Come on now. It's not that's not what we're doing here. Let's 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 properly talk about what these things are. Okay. I think I think like there are three more artifacts that could be good if okay. you removed if you remove the word melee. Oh yeah, sure. Well that's that is the problem, yes. <laughs> yes. The rest of these are imagine? largely they could be good if it didn't say melee. Yes. Can you imagine a uh, Lord of Change shooting someone and being like, you can't unbind spells anymore. That would be great. But uh, no. It would be super cool, but it's not how it works. Yes, because the, the uh, I will say the Lord of Change is, uh, you know, he's got his little shooting thing. is It's a shooting thing. It can it can do some, some little work. A lot of the heroes all have little bits of shooting. And I found mm -hmm. that it actually does start to add up after you're just like, and this guy shoots, and this guy shoots, and this guy shoots, and this guy shoots. It's just... Just a lot. You just kind of are always putting out all these little hits. Uh, okay, let's talk spell lords. So here we have two spell lords: the mortal arcanite spell lore. Okay, and the demon wizard spell lore. So mortal lore, demon lore, same as before. Bolt of Zinch is on both of them. I'll say that real quick. Uh, which is a casting value of 7, range of 18, d6 mortal wounds. Can't be cast more than once per turn, even though it's on both. But it's just a standard, solid old fireball spell for all intents and purposes, right? That's how I think of these kinds of things. It's just like, it's a big boom, it's d6 mortals. It's never a bad thing to have d6 mortal wounds on something. It's fine. Okay, now let's talk about the different ones. Daniil, I'm going back to you first. Uh, let's, let's, let's do these, break them up. Let's talk Arcanite first. How do you feel about these spells? Like, what's your what's I your think, pick? You go first. This is my next thing. This is my next thing. What are you doing? Well, there are two that are really good for different types of lists. Sure. Um, I really, really like what I did with the New Arcane Suggestion. The way they were flip-flopping back and forth of what to do with it, with, with different effects. I think they hit it that on now. Um, it's just an amazing spell. It's yep. Just yeah, yeah. Like arcane suggestion, so that everybody just to summarize it for everybody: casting by of eight, range of eighteen. Pick an enemy unit, and they either can't issue or receive commands, neg one to hit and wound, uh, or neg one for to saves. What a great three selection of mm -hmm. abilities there! Like three fantastic debuffs you you want to put on people. This spell is brutal and. It's very, very scary. Yes. Howling right. Howling Gale plus six inch range is phenomenal. Yeah, yep. That's one of the best luminous spells, and this is just one of three options for this one. Incredible. Yep. 
Uh, Krondis is over here with, you know, he's got, he's got enhanced range, but he's like, am I a joke to you with my atavistic tempest on a nine? Is that what's happening? Uh, okay. Uh, yes, this spell, yep, this good. spell is, is the one you pair with, uh, arcade, uh, sacrifice, right? So 27 inch range, just deep off something great. Just amazing. And Arcade Sacrifice is the whole phase, so you could do two, multiple spells. You could put an Ender Spell and Ar Arcane Suggestion, and maybe if you've got a third spell somehow, you could zap that 27 too, so amazing. Okay. Uh, and then, so I just want to address something. Autumn, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about some of the melee stuff. I think there is viable melee units in here. I understand, Autumn, your sort of general concern with the integration of S2D units. Right and the problems that causes, I get that. Um, that being said, I think there is call, and we'll, well, like I'm gonna talk about some builds where I'm integrating S2D units into this army, and I think a pretty interesting way. I think there's some beast units that make a lot of sense in builds. I think there is some slaves units that make a lot of sense in builds. Um, but I think Zinch is a more ranged force. Like it, it, I think it does conceptually operate more at range. It's magic heavy. It has a lot more shooting. Like it wants to be at range using its extreme high mobility because it has, like in its sort of raw conception, a lot of mobility, a lot of ranged firepower. If you also gave it super high melee capabilities, I think then you're going to very quickly wander into a, a, a highly unbalanced force. Now you could redo everything. You could sort of sap away some of that magic power and some of that shooting efficacy and stuff like that, some of that mobility to then bump that up, but then it would feel less like Zinch to me. But I understand everybody has their own take on that thing. So I, I get what you're saying, Autumn. Okay. I think there are uh, two good melee units now in the book. Maybe three. Yeah. We'll discuss them when we get to you. So I, I agree. Let's uh, discuss the next spell. Yes. Uh, are we talking Shield of Fate next? Or what are, you, are we talking... What? what are you, where, is that where we're going next? Okay. Shield of Fate. Love it. Cast six, range of 18. You get to pick a friendly Zinch unit. Zinch unit. Just Zinch. <laughs> so important to mention that. Just Zinch. I'm just going to let that sink in for everybody. Hopefully that, that washes over people. Yep. And they and based on your number of fate dice, you get... Like, what you're aiming for is to have seven to nine fate dice. So you then get a ward of five up and a four plus spell ignore. Uh, Good times. Good times. So just to recap, from the old book, it used to be uh, the first effect was reroll once to save, then the second effect was reroll all saves, and then third effect was uh, reroll all saves and four uh, spell ignore, uh, which I used quite a lot in my uh, double ten chosen list that I won the London Open with. That was a rather funny list when the the cogs were absolutely broken and provided double spells for everyone. Uh, yeah, that was a fun list, but. This, I think, is first of all removing the reels, which is what they have been doing for a while now, which is good. Uh, reels for saves, specifically. Um, but also, I think it's just a neater way to implement it. Yep. And there is at least some counterplay in terms of you know, uh, Ruse um, have, uh, have got the ability to ignore wards. You know, Quicksilver Dead have got the ability to ignore wards. Um, but carry the on demon the Lord, put a special bullet into the grenade launcher and take out a ward save. So that the new demon that, prince, which is coming from the yeah. new sixty book. So. Sure. So there's there is some counterplay there. It is incredibly good, and the fact that you know you can potentially bring in some beasts of chaos meat or some uh, some slaves to darkness meat and just slap a you know five up ward onto them just because of the, of the keyword via coalition is very interesting. Yep. Absolutely. So yeah, there is one unit. There is one unit that we're all thinking of when we look at this spell. What and is it's the one unit? Thirty horrors. Thirty <laughs> horrors with this. Sure. Sure. Everybody's oh. favorite unit in the game. Everybody wants to see just as many horrors as we can get on the table. Is a great time for all. Um, glimpse of future is add back a, a fake die. It's great. It's good. It's good or destiny nice. dice. Sorry, apologize. Sorry, uh, which is good. Nice and streamlined. Yep, just if you got less than nine, roll one, add one. Good. Yeah, thumbs up. They actually took out. They took out the cap in destiny dice and, and actually just put it into the where it's relevant. The rules.
models that actually add them back, which is really good streamlining, right where you need it. And this is like, this was more or less an auto cast for me. Most rounds, there's generally enough spell cast to go around to where you want to do it. Just keeps the engine humming. Uh, and then, so, Daniil, what's your take? Well, Infusion Arcanum, I'm like, okay, whatever. But what's your take on Treacherous Bond? The Infusion Arcanum, you put it on the on the guy, on the launch on, and then you just rams into people. Yeah, that's, sure. that's great. Yeah, I was saying, um, let's go back to the Infusion Arcanum <laughs> with on the Thaumaturge twos yeah, yeah. on all of your profile attacks, mm. double piling and attacking. Maybe it doesn't speak to me. It doesn't speak truth to me, but sure. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's there. I, I miss, like, it's not I bad. Miss, Plus one to hit wound is not bad. Oh. Yeah, back in the day, Archeon casting that spell. Right. In Fatal and Warband some time ago now, but it was great. And Treacherous Bond is, is exceptional as well for keeping uh, key uh, heroes alive. I would prefer course. if you could you cast know. it instead of the Endless Spells free game. <laughs> Just remove that counterplay. No sniping today. Yeah. Or or just remove this spell entirely and just put it on the uh, on, on the, the Arca Arcanite War Scroll. Just protect the heroes. That's your yeah. job. So Do it. Body. Protect the big customer. Or yeah, just make it on five plus or something. Just, yeah. I don't yeah, know. I'm mixed feelings on this spell. Yeah, I will say it's it's quite so here's what I like about it. Uh, we mentioned Gaunty multiple times. He picks this up automatically, right? Just because he knows this whole lore. Right. right. And he has generally been the person who mm -hmm. was casting it. I would point out that the unit he throws the ability on is, is Zinch Mortal again, mm -hmm. uh, just which is a wider set of sort of targets, but uh, not as limited, not as unlimited as just a Zinch, but still. And, uh, you know, he is very potent, but fragile, and you don't want him to get, to get, sort of lifted by various threats the fact that you don't have to commit for him to have it like that is to say if you happen to be in a fight where you need it and you can he is he's not a big hero like i mean i literally like he is a physically tiny model right he's not very big even on the disc so it is relatively easy to keep him sort of out of range or back or hidden or under a piece of terrain or something that'll keep him safe the first round even if you're going to get alpha or something and then and then get the spell off and then from that point he becomes a lot harder to remove so you, yeah you can get like behind cover you can do finest hour that's plus two to save even before you use all that defense you know, they may still kill you if they put more wound sniping into you but you know, at least it's not completely trivial on the four up save disc one right so if you use treacherous bond on a unit that is shield of faded with maximum dice does that mean that the wounds that are getting pushed off by that spell are negated on a four plus? You're saying because they ignore the effects of that spell? Yeah. No, because it's not the yeah. spell that's doing it. It's the it's like the wound has transferred. It's not the direct spell that's causing the wound. They've been pretty yeah, clear on this stuff. Like the you're ignoring the effect of the spell. You, you can the ignore the initial cost on this unit that is. Oh, I see what you mean now. I would say it's on the. Precious bond is primarily it's not the on spell the, you're ignoring. Yeah. You're ignoring the effect of the spell. Agreed. It's a good. Actually, this is a good question. Yeah, because you could argue that the effect is both on the wizard. The and effect the is the allocation of the wound. Mm. I mean, a, a fun one for the FAQ. We know how they're going to answer it, Tom. You, you, I know. We, we, like. It was, it's, just, it's, it was just a curious. It was a curious uh, alignment of uh, of of language and wording. Sure, you're it's, right that it, it's one step it's a lot closer than like mine razor trying to resist mine razor on your sure, sure. Sure. It's it's definitely a lot there's, closer to working there's one thing to mention and that is zinch mortal does not include zangors so yeah. in in the whole zinch book it's yeah. only heroes and uh carrier yeah but you can include some yeah. slave darkness guys yep yeah slaves there there are plenty of zinch mortals hanging out in the slaves to darkness area uh, of the coalition selections, many many things you can choose there that would qualify as those things. Yes. Okay. The lore of change. Uh, let's let's run wild. Uh, let's run wild with some change here, because uh, we got some fun ones in this list. This this one is more my speed. I've enjoyed this lore quite a bit. Not that I didn't actually. I like both these lures, but I I quite like this one a bit. 
um, just because I like the I like doing damage with spells, and a lot of these do that. Um, Daniil, what do you like out of this list? Where, where are you at? Where are you living with these? So, for the most part, it's the same as it was before. Yep. Um, I think there was only one change that I could find, and that is the Treason of Zinch um, has to be on the two or more models. I think that was not the case previously. It might have been the case previously, but I think overall it's the same. Same same good. It, it was it was good before. It was it's good now. It's some mortal wounds here, mortal wounds there. Uh, yep. and uh, fold reality. Roll a dice, you either die or or, or you get better. It's nice. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Exactly. Uh you, you know, so you still return your demons back. Uh, let's all remember uh, as of a quite a long time ago your Skyfires and Enlightened are no longer demons, so we are talking about the demon demons here. Uh, the weird, the with the weird alien bubblegum monsters that do make up the Zinch Force are your targets for this. Yeah, I mean, Trees of Zinch, it's two people. Uh, it's, you know, uh, a horde thinner with a kicker of a neg one to hit. Uh, Unchecked Mutation can be a double tap D3. As you mentioned, Fold Reality is the return spell. Firestorm can be, is your, is your, like, hope you roll hot and get some mortal wounds and not accidentally get zero. Uh, this is, this is your swingy swingy effect, right? Of just like, Hey, you could, you could spike a ton or it could just be nothing. Uh, both ends of those are quite normal. The most I got was 10, I believe on firestorm once. And then, uh, the least I got was zeros. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. One, Uh, one thing to note is that the, the Zinch demon for fold reality includes, the Slaves of Darkness demons. Uh, but Zinch demons are only Demon Prince and the Soul Grinder. So, like, you could put it on them, but but why? <laughs> well, as soon as they let us take units of Soul Grinders, we'll, we'll be all set. There We we, we all await that day uh, when we can start rolling out units of three, uh, three 160 mil pie plate Soul Grinders in the meta breaks. I, I can't wait, so... I mean, it could be like a really cool trick. You'd be like, "Did you want me to kill my soul grinder?" No, I didn't. Or, or kill Archeon as well. You really didn't like him. <laughs> Just get rid of this guy. I'm done with you. On Go one. On. Uh, all one. right. Let's talk covens. Uh, so we got six covens still. Uh, they feel very much in line with the old covens, but of course we have the new style design. <clears throat> I don't think there's anything that suddenly blew my skirt up or was truly revolutionary here. We're stealing a lot of the previous abilities and obviously jettisoning the the rest of the detritus from 2.0 uh, sub-factions. So Eternal Conflag is now your Warp Flame, Billowing Warp Flame, and Magical Flames all become Rend 1. This also adds Flamer Battle Line. Uh, host Duplicitous is enemy units within 3 inches of a Host Duplicitous unit with 10 or more models can't retreat. There are not uh, not a huge number of things that you're going to use for that, but I think we all can pretty quickly picture a thing. Uh, in addition... Zangor, we're, right? We're talking about Zangor. <laughs> correct. <Pirate. That's, laughs> we were all talking about Karak Acolytes, Tom. That's obviously what we all had in our head. Obviously. Obviously. Uh, no, we're talking about horrors again. Okay, and then in addition... Uh, once per battle, when a host place this horrors of Zinch unit from your starting army is destroyed, you can roll a die on a four-up. You get five little guys back. How nice. There they are. Why, why did it need that second roll? Yeah, it's one of the strongest anyway. It was, yeah. I mean, it, it got nerfed so yeah. quite heavily. So they, they took the good roll, sorry, good roll and then put it onto Sylvanath, and then they gave us the, the new one. So yeah, that's fine. This is the night um, one version which is is, is weaker yeah. but, i mean army they retreat yeah. so so overpowered into melee units it's just it's just misery inducing and before so, the horror one the the return horrors back was on the five plus and it was 10 so it was like ah do you want to feel bad yeah, <laughs> yeah uh yeah so now you get a little four up kicker but i agree the the army wide well army wide units of 10 that is to say no retreat is is Always a very, very potent thing, depending on your particular mm-hmm. enemy. Um, yeah, I, think, I think I'm right in saying that it used to have the best of the command traits for the, um, or one of the best at least for the uh, locked-in ones, uh, along with the host arcana. 
So yeah, uh, it has a lot of stats in line with other version three battle tomes. Yep. The yeah. host Arcanum is my uh, new most mostest favoriteest, uh, which is because it unlocks Screamer battle line. I think Daniel, I might be with you on the on the Screamer thing here. I think you and I are going to be very Screamer aligned uh, on this. Uh, but also, of course, once per turn or once per turn in the first, third, and fifth battle round, you just get to say no, and just saying no is generally very good. Uh, of course, you don't mind the enemy casting spells that aren't going to really affect your particular game plan, but when they do cast that one spell that is going to get in your way, hey, stop that, stop it. You can just Dikembe Mutombo that right out of the game. Just no, no. And it's lost the yeah. pre-game move, which is quite a big deal because that would otherwise have really it used to synergize so well. You could pre-game move into unbind range when you yeah you, know, you could would... pre-game move the same unit three three, three times as well. So you yeah. moved yeah. your chicken up front, and then you're like ah all the spells. Um, <laughs> they also lost three six screamers, but um, I will take the new screamers over the free old six ones. Fair enough. Yep. Yep. Uh, now let's talk about this other page that I like one thing on. Um, Can I ask why, like, just why have we never gotten something that is, like, friendly to Zangor? Ever. But yet we're still pushing the Acolyte game super hard. We're just trying to make Acolytes right. a thing. It's like fetch. Right. Stop it. It's not going to be a thing. I, um, the, the friendly to Zangor thing is the Beast of Chaos book. Or rather, the, the new update. Right, indeed. It's true. Indeed. No, I mean, you're right. You're right. I did have a, a, a game against a cult of the transient form um, army right after the. It, uh, the, the it doesn't exist. Uh, I mean, it, it may have been the fact he rolled five sixes on his destiny dice, and I have a photo to prove that. But it was pretty strong, actually, putting those, those angles. It, it, it does need a clarification of whether the number of uh, angles can go over the the uh, maximum if it can that makes it a bit more tempting but uh like zombies or like one of the other rules in this book but it's not compelling on its face i agree i i don't think it placed anywhere ever and they decided to keep it the same that's yeah. that's the most disappointing Underworld. thing here yeah yeah i and like same go ahead continue sorry same ish for pirate Free. It's slightly better, but still. Yeah, between the two acolyte focused items, like if you were you were like gun to my head, I, I have to pick one of these two, right? This must be the army you're gonna play. I, I would absolutely just pick Pyrophane Cult every time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah. I you know, I, I transient form feels such an appendix. Uh, just out there, this useless organ that I don't know what it's there for. Pyrophane called, I at least get what its game plan is, right? Like, okay, cool. Um, you know, light things gonna, on fire. Cool. Yeah, you're gonna take a lot of these dudes. You're gonna make a ton of like low quality, but but decent enough shooting attacks. This is plus one to hit for all of those. Uh, and you know, you can, and then you could get to do a little mini. Uh, what do I want to call it? Like a mini. Um, blow ab effect on them during that phase where they can take some kicker mortal wounds okay sure encourages it to just like spread out your damage hit a bunch of units and then roll across and trigger a bunch you know hopefully some amount of free mortal wounds right uh, so okay like that's a plan i we can argue whether or not it's like good or bad but at least i get what's going on right i don't i don't know what the army is that uses call to the transient form to to win like i don't know what the game plan there is it's you really don't use it to win. <laughs> you, you use it it's to... It's really rely on you. Yeah. You, you just... Uh, you don't use it to win, you just use it to be funny. You're <laughs> like, okay, look, I position my accolades here, then wholly within nine, I have my Zangors, and then they might come back, and then they fight as well. It, although they, they're not designed to fight, but yeah. But you, Look, shot, it, but you shot off all the Zangors, and now I'm sad. That is the, the sad news, that there is so much shooting that yes. it fundamentally has that weakness. Yep. And then finally, Guild of Summoners, which is still Guild of Summoners, where you can only summon Lords of Change, but your Lords of Change, instead of costing 30, go 9, and then 18, and then 30 from 18, there. 18, 18, 18. No, it's, isn't yeah. it? 
Oh, yeah, sorry. Yes. Yeah, 18 from there on out. Sorry, yes. Yeah. It's 18, yeah, it 18, got, 18, 18, 18. Yeah, 18, 18, 18. Yes, correct. Sorry. It got better in that case, but also uh, it's now you have to summon from Arcanite heroes only. Yeah. Yes, that is an excellent point. Yeah. Yeah, so if you kill all their Arcanite heroes, it shuts off the it shuts off magic chicken uh extravaganza. Yeah. But uh yeah. you can like if you're careful about it or, or have the right setup, it, I could see some guild of summoners happening where you're you're crapping out quite a few battle magic chickens. Like that's 18 is an is, is an achievable oh number. Just, well, you could definitely do a yeah. turn 1. If you have a general that has, um, like, if you have a chicken general, ironically. Getting to that. nine is, that's that's table stakes, absolutely, yes. Like, because you can dump the three fate from, like, the general, and then double or double cast from a chicken, and be at, like, five from one unit. Yeah, so as it stands, it's Lord of Change keyword, and the Forge world... Lord of Change still has that keyword and is twenty wounds and a lot. More he's points. also he's also old stealing spells. He's like I learned them. Yeah. He's, he's, nice. he's actually potentially interesting, but he's very interesting if you can summon him for the lower cost. It will be a big so dude. It will be a big dude. Because... Yeah. But you know, I'll ask yeah. you to go him. Unfortunately, Kairos lost the Lord of Change keyword. Yeah. Because otherwise, he would have been my first summon. I'm just going to slide him so, on the table for nine points. He's an FAQ currently, or prior to this book, so at least that's yeah, that wasn't happening at least. But yeah, so Guild of Summoners was was the 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 list that I've tried already with like okay. six heroes and uh, six units of Zangors just to do the the totem spam, and it worked pretty well. I actually won against an. Um, Almost optimized beast list, which was interesting. Nice, yeah, not an easy summoned, game for sure right now. Yeah, summoned two chickens, which was funny. Look, free chickens are good. I mean, that's that's yeah. true in normal life. That's true in in Warhammer. It's just generally true. Okay, making me hungry. Absolutely. All right, yeah, early show. I haven't I haven't eaten yet, so I'm, I'm dinner after mm -hmm. this show. So I gotta I gotta all this talk about chicken is gonna really really mess me up. All right. Let's get into this stuff. Got I got to talk about this stuff because I hate that they're making me talk about this, which is the match play, grand strategies, and battle tactics. But the reason I have to talk about it is because move it on over, Doc. A new contender has entered the fray. Okay, we can. Doc, I don't want to get in a fight about which one's got the easier picks. All right, mm -hmm. but these ain't hard. You've got to grant me that, Nico. These ain't oh, yeah. hard. I, I, contender is right. I'd say second after after Doc. And uh, the good thing is there aren't any bonus points uh, on the, these ones. But there are some, you can definitely build around these. Or some of them will almost just happen. You know, so, uh, and the you know, the ground strats are solid as well. So they're strong. They are strong. I think yeah, I love the grand strats here. Yeah, go go ahead, go go ahead, uh, Tom. I think, go. I think it's worth. Daniel, yeah, oh, sorry. Take it. No, take it. Sorry, it's, it's worth. It's worth mentioning that we lost the uh, agendas, right? So these yes. basically replaced agendas. I think Absolutely. we forgot to mention mention that we before. Did. We did. Thank you. Yes, I'm so glad to see the agendas cut. Get out of here, you stupid yeah. vestigial rule that didn't need to be in the book that was just randomly introduced in the last one. Didn't exist in book one. Shows up in book two. Gone. Now, now we're back to the correct state of being. Which is no agendas, and you're right; these are effectively sort of playing that role. Um, like Good the boy. Master of Destiny is obviously a pretty low-hanging fruit grand strategy that you have a, a, you know, a pretty you have a pretty decent amount of control over that. That's not really a counter playable thing. I mean, I guess to a point, you can just sort of force people to sit on it. But with the ability to, there are many abilities to refill Destiny dice, so getting to just okay. nine or more is not hard, right? And then Realm of Magic does have, obviously that's the one that does have some counterplay, but it's also not the hardest bar in the world to lift as long as your casters are still alive at the end of the game and can just be like, yep, yep, there we go, done. It's, there they if are. Your, your opponent has remembered and, or asked you in the fourth battle round, then they might try and dispel one, but that, that cannot be relied upon to happen. Right. Uh, 
And so, you know, that's that's fine. There, I don't honestly have a problem with their grand strats because I don't have a problem with grand strats in general. Um, army specific grand strategies don't really bother me. There are three points. They don't often matter. They just sometimes matter. Uh, they're a they're a game wide thing. You have to commit to on your list for all the reasons we've talked about in the past. I don't mind grand strats and I don't mind army specific grand strats. Now let's talk about this toxic crap uh, that is slowly poisoning the the very lifeblood of our game, which is battle tactics in general, but book battle tactics in specific. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna go through these, and we're gonna we're, here's what we're gonna do. Ready? We're gonna play a game with this. Just a quick game. We're gonna we're gonna rate this on the Zinch scale, one to nine. All right, nine means it is highly easily achievable. One means it's not. You with me? Like nine good, easy to do slam dunk battle tactic. One not or anywhere in between. Right. So we're gonna use the numbers of Zinch. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read these, and then we're all going to vote on these. All right? Here we go. Call for change. You complete this battle tactic if you summon a Lord of Change to the battlefield this turn. All right. Daniil, one through nine. What's your vote? Going for a six. Uh, six. Okay. Nico? Uh, going for five. It's very much the Guild of Summoners uh, yeah. one, yeah. which I think you is have to take... my favorite sub faction, so it, it helps. You have to take a specific sub faction, but it's like basically it's guaranteed fine. for you to do it. So it's like, trade. yep, that's fair. Okay. Tom five or no, like nine is the easiest, right? Nine is the best. Yeah. Nine is like the overall yeah. best easiest so five dunk as a general. It's like a four or five guild of summoners is a nine. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you, Tom. It's like four and in, in general sort of take, I get what you were doing, yeah. Daniel. You averaged it. I didn't tell like, which is fair. <laughs> Right, but I'm gonna say it's a solid eight nine in in Guild of Summoners. Right, okay, fair enough. It's a freebie. It's yeah. a freebie in Guild. Yeah, Mass Conjuration. Pick one friendly disciples of Zinch Wizard. You complete this battle tactic if that wizard successfully casts three or more spells in that turn, and none of those spells are unbound. Okay, Daniil, hit me. It's um seven, I think. Okay, there's like a couple of lists that I'm thinking of without a three custom, right? So right. in those ones, it's it's not great. But otherwise, it's like, yes, nine. <laughs> right, <laughs> absolutely. Because you you're going to Arcane Tome on a chicken or something and and, and or use some combination of, of your very strong spellcasting or just Destiny Dice the three out or whatever you need to do or or whatever. Okay. Uh, Nico? I would also go with the seven. I, I would say that you do have to at least invest either the Arcane Tome or you take Kairos. And that more importantly, I think you have to, this influences your decision as to whether to go first or second, because against some of the harder matchups, you know, Seraphon, Luminous, so on, there is going to be a real unbinding risk if you, at least for one of the spells, you might be able to send you know, one or two of them guaranteed. But um, what if they could be unbound? Sure, you can. Some of them you can make, uh, yeah. No, no, you, can, you can just you can, make, you can three invest years. in it to make it more reliable. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Um, but there is some potential counterplay, or you're at least having to invest effort and uh, command traits and so on and so forth into that. So again, you're building into it. So seven. Okay. Tom, I'm going to say six because it takes an investment. A bird with like re to reliably do this, you need to have a bird with a arcane tone, right? Like that's your chosen caster that's going to three or or a demagogue with a tome, yeah. Like that would be your choices. Okay, a demagogue sure. arcanite who's who's going to power out the doubles. Sure. The challenge is is that there's enough in the meta that can just say no. Sure, there is. A, there's there's um, some auto unbinding that's like hiding around. There's auto un unbinding uh, hiding in stormcast in in LRL, um, and a handful of other armies, such that like and this geez. isn't just an automatic. What? Banshees. If you were Banshees, gonna, you right. you'd never pick a point and click zap spell or a debuff into the banshee or near the banshees. But if you, you right, know, that, that restricts right. And so, so it's just it's not as auto as I think a lot of people like. They look at it as auto, but I think that the meta is such that like it will it, it is not as good as it looks. Exactly. Okay. Uh, yeah, I agree. Yeah. I seven sounds right to me. So, yep, I'm with that. Uh, all right. 
Ninefold Dismantlement. Pick one enemy unit that has nine or more models, or one enemy hero monster with a wounds characteristic of nine or more. You have to destroy that unit this turn. You going for eight on this one, Daniil? Yeah. I, uh, I'll, I'll give away my vote. I agree. It's a solid eight drifting toward nine because like you're going to pick it. You know the unit. You know they're in range. You know what you have available. You're going to turn them into ash by the end of the round. Like That's what's going to happen. Yeah. One thing I did uh, during the game, because the design core banners are the start of the hero phase as well. So I've, I've done half so of my banners into, into the Shagoth. And he was like down to two wounds. And I was like, okay, I'll take him. And then... <laughs> Killing. Very nice, very nice. Yeah, Love I it. mean, yeah, I'd, I'd also go with eight, maybe eight and a half, because you can even do things like, you know, arcane suggestions, stop them receiving any commands uh, or issuing commands so they can't redeploy away from your melee unit that wants to smash the, smash the unit or uh, they can't pull out defense, etc. etc. So you have a, an immense toolbox to do this one, and it's very generous in terms of, I think it's like a Stormcast equivalent, perhaps battle tactic where you know it has to have the full amount of wounds it's not storm cuts maybe it's silver they it has it's like a yeah where they have to be not more like... but they have to be fully they have to yeah. lose all their, their health not just the final wound so it is yeah it's the best so far but... yeah you can if you start your turn and there's some one wound hero just who happens to be hanging on or something you're like nope sorry about your luck guy <laughs> it's looks like curtains for you uh <laughs> okay Reckless Abandon. Pick one friendly mortal disciples of Zinch unit that is more than 18 inches from all enemy units. You complete this battle tactic if that unit completes a charge move in this turn. Okay. Can I give it more than a nine? <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is, if we could go above nine, this would be the one that's like busting the nine, right? Because you have... Plenty of easy options here, and you have Destiny Dice to guarantee the charge, even if they try to redeploy away from you. So, it's this was the three. easiest agenda <laughs> to complete, yeah, and the best agenda to complete. And now it's the best battle tactic. So, or alter. Did you did you do it with a like a throwaway sixteen move wizard, or presumably you didn't yeah. do it with Kyrix and like teleport them or something? Or how did you just a no, fast wizard just, just charge yeah. some chaff unit and survived? Not so good against Sons of Behemoth, I suppose, because you'll probably lose the, the wizard, but so be it. It's well, I, I did it at the same same turn I did uh, Demon Heart. I just killed something oh, that I oh, yeah. you got in, and I was like, I'm, yeah, I'm here, yeah. cool, deal with it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I will yeah, say, that's the play, back, right? It's but... it's some mortal wizard who's going to, on a, on a disc, who's going to just zip 16 inches across the board and then just easily land the charge, even if they try to get away from you. Yeah. Uh, and then finally, Tides of Anarchy. You complete this battle tactic if you gain control of an objective that was controlled by your opponent at the start of your hero phase, and you have nine or more friendly models within six inches of that objective when you gain control of it. Solid eight. Okay. Maybe, maybe nine. Yeah. Ooh, I'd say seven. It's kind of similar to the um, the Black Coach one of the Nighthorn. Um, probably a little bit easier. Um, in terms of how close you have to get, but there is some counterplay. The problem, is, there. The problem is, you don't need the coach. Oh, sure, yeah, you don't have to invest in the coach, which is a big advantage. But uh, yeah, there is some counterplay in terms of your opponent can either you know not hold objectives that they don't need to if they've got their control one, two, and more. They can just you know hold those tightly and not put one token model on the third objective. Say, um, you know, they can make it yeah. make you actually require some investment to do it. I look at it as the the beasts one, where you need to take over an objective with someone's unit, and I do it every game, right? So it's it's just slam dunk. Yeah. yeah, I mean, to me, the 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 interesting thing about it, Nico. You I mean you mentioned the range, but your nine or more models only have to be within six of yeah. the objective, not wholly within. So I mean, like it's you can just tow around to be where you need to be. Like, you know, it's, it actually yeah. is pretty forgiving as far as I think the movement capabilities of it. So that's, that's why I agree. I rated this like an eight. Um, I think it's, it's very doable. Like the turn you pick it, you're going to be like, yep, I'm, I'm getting this right. Is you, you already have the pieces in place to do it. Um, yeah. I think, I think it's worth mentioning nine screamers in the counter three battalion. Yeah. 
Very I just, you're like, Very yeah. Here's twenty seven models. It, it's also worth saying that it doesn't say nine or more friendly models from your starting army within yeah. six inches of it. So summons can fulfill this as well, right? So just as a, as a point. Um, Very good. So there's you just you just have options. So after that, you can see. I mean, let's look at the, what was the average rating for the ease of completing these battle tactics? Like eight, seven and a half. You know, I mean, like. Yeah. There, these are these are very doable, and the funny part about it is, I think honestly, outside of Guild of Summoners, you've got and, and outside of building directly toward it, in many games, you'll have probably three of them that you can slam dunk, and that's Doc's strat, right? Doc strat is three that they can slam dunk. That's when you've got with three that you can do with extremely minimal mm-hmm. counterplay. You're gonna go five for five. Because you, you mean like you don't need to do all five that are in here, right? There's everybody. We all know against the odds exists and desecrate their lands exists and that kind of stuff, right? I mean, you're getting two out of the normal pack of eight is not at all challenging. Nobody gets less than two out of the normal pack, right? So when you've got three to fall back on that you are in the, the driver's seat on, it just says to me, hey, I'm going to go five for five. So just accept that. So. Yeah. yeah, table me, please. Right, <laughs> right. That's the. That's how you stop me. Yeah, exactly. Uh, all right. Be the next page. Sorry, there we go. Uh, the battalion, the omniscient oracles. Okay. Cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Kairos and three lords of change, huh? It looks very good on the table. Steve Wren's one was phenomenal. Beautiful. Just can you just like take Guild of Summoners? Just summon them. Just please, <laughs> if only. Uh, so nobody's going to use this. So cool. We can just move on. This is how core battalions should be in army books. Useless. I'm with it. Okay. Now let's get to the war scrolls. Uh, all right. Do we'll move kind of quickly through these because we're going a little long, so, but we'll. We'll fly through them here. I do want to spend a little bit of time on the two chickens, but then a lot of stuff's going to be quick. We'll just kind of talk about, like, do we see the hero being used and what are the sort of combos? Um, But the chickens are worth exploring a little bit. Um, All right. Magic chickens. They're still magic chickens. Um, But there are some notable changes. Uh, Kairos. Yeah, 16 wounds, 4-up save. He's a chicken. He's 435 points. Uh, He is a trip cast wizard slash unbinder slash dispeller. Uh, importantly now, the Beacon of Sorcery adds one to casting, dispelling, uh, casting rolls, dispelling rolls, and unbinding rolls for friendlies each wizards, while they're wholly within 18 inches of this unit. In addition, this unit knows all of the spells from the Lore of Change, which is great. Uh, important note about Beacon of Sorcery is it doesn't say within 18 inches of any one with this ability. So if you do happen to double chicken, they do stack with each other, so the two chickens are adding... Plus two to each other slash everybody else who happens to be in the Venn diagram overlap of their Beacon of Sorcery bubbles. Um, if they dispel an endless spell, you don't have to dispel it. Instead, you take it. You, you get that now. That's This is mine now. I'm going to play with this. Uh, Kairos gets this little extra kick where he, uh, if he's part of your army and you have fewer than nine Destiny dice, you just get to roll one and add it in. So he's just constantly refilling your Destiny dice during your hero phase. Uh, Master of Magic is still the same. It's they, they rotate the lower die to the higher die, which means that you're sort of available possible casts. You have, uh, what is it, like a 75% chance to make your casts a... that your cast will be 9, 11, or 13 every time you cast a spell. I think that's the statistical way that works out, that that's your final roll. Um, assuming nothing else messing with it, like no other rerolls or anything, just base on the scroll. And Kairos doesn't have his just straight drop drop the hot six anymore on you for your mortal wounds. His spell is now basically like the normal chickens, and it starts at three up and then gets worse as he gets wounded. Uh, so now it's, you know, casting value seven, 18 inch range. You roll nine dice every, we'll just assume base wound profile, every three up is a mortal wound. Still a highly damaging spell. It's just not straight six anymore. He doesn't straight six people. Okay. Or That's spawn big. people. Yes, yes, absolutely. Or spawn people. He doesn't turn them into spawns. There's plenty of other things there where you can still make spawns. Don't worry for everybody who loves spawns. Oh, yeah. 
lots of spawning can still happen. Uh, and then just quickly, I'll do the normal chicken just so we can compare and talk about both of them. Normal chicken, still 14 wounds, 4 up save, 400 points. Um, does have more and varied uh, sort of obviously weapon options than Kairos. Kairos is built a specific way because he's Kairos. You can t you don't get all your weapons, You could, but I think the Rod of Sorcery combination is going to be very popular because it does add a relatively valuable shooting attack to him. He's a double caster, double unbinder. He still has Beacon of Sorcery, still has the Spell Thief, so you can still say this is mine to end the spells. Uh, still has the rotate the lower die to the higher die, and he has the same Infernal Gateway that bonuses on the same number. Okay, that's the two, two uh, magic chickens. Uh, Daniil, what do you think of magic chickens? I think they're still worth it. I think they're very good. Um, I think both of them have interesting things to mention. So I'll quickly go through a couple of things for Kairos and a couple of things for Lord Kane. So for Kairos, he is a bit tougher now. So two or more wounds than before, which is nice. Um, because I basically stopped playing him because he used to die immediately to uh, long-range crossbows from Stormcast. Uh, and that's no longer the case. So that's good. Um, but then also he lost his rig, but he gained Oracle, which I think is probably better now that I thought about it more. It's, yeah, it's a hot take, but... Uh, it's better for I the game over the... overall. Let me say that. Oh, pretty... That we don't have to, like, create the million, understand the million rules loopholes that his mm -hmm. old change somebody else's die created. That was just, like, the single biggest source of rules yeah. problems. Yeah. And I do think, I agree with you, I think it's actually a stronger ability. Like, I ran Kairos in one of the games, and I was like, man, I just feel like I am just gas in the tank on Destiny Dice. If, if he's not getting mm -hmm. lifted... Boy, do you feel it. Between that and, and Glimpse, yeah. I'm just like, I'm just burning these boys. Yeah, he's weaker now in uh, Legion of First Prince, right? Because you don't have Destiny Dice there, and you don't have Rick, so he's uh, a bit useless there. Um, but he does, he and the Chicken, both of them know spells outside of the Legions, because they just know the Lord of Trinity. He yep. doesn't say when they're with, in, in the army, so that's good. Um, an Infernal Gateway Double Chicken got slightly weaker because you can't do a 6 model wound spell and essentially another 6 model wound spell. But uh, you do get better custom. So there's trade-offs. Yep. Yeah, the, the, the Double Chicken for the Double Beacon is still... I mean, that's just... It's it's potent. It's not to be underestimated. Setting your... Again, setting your... When, when there's two chickens and then all of a sudden you've got five casts... And where every cast is like, as I said, a seventy foot. Assuming nothing else going on, we're just it's just literally two chickens standing alone in the field, right? Seventy five percent of your casts now become ten, twelve, fourteen. That is, those are those are numbers. Those are numbers, folks. So, can yeah. I say a few words on? Yeah, please hit me, Nico. Chicken, uh, mourn, chicken away. Mourn Oracle of Eternity. Truly, the end of an era. The that poor stone horn that got killed in mysterious circumstances on some deadly terrain one day is really getting his revenge today. So, yes, so it's gone. The rig, uh, arguably the best rule in the game, I would say. Um, as you say, it's a huge amount of complications and counterplay and so on gone at a stroke. Uh, it's a big change. I do also like the the new ability. What what I found really interesting about it. So. Um, it gives you this sort of, because you have to use it at the start of the hero phase, normally you would have nine Destiny dice in the start of the hero phase if you went first. You may want to go second. Um, because And that leaves you in a situation where you can't actually burn any before you... Um, uh, you want to burn one and then replace it with the one that um, Kairos is going to give you. So that's normally a problem. So there is, I can see one way at least to circumvent that, which is using your um, arcane armies, you put down your um, ender spell, which cannot be uh, dispelled, but that doesn't mean you can't attempt to dispel it. So you just roll the dispel in the start of the hero phase. And there's an FAQ saying that you can do start the hero phase stuff in any order you like. Right. So you burn, two, your, you burn your two awful destiny dice um, in your first start of the hero phase before your opponent's had a turn. So you get down to seven, then still start the hero phase, use the new oracle, get a better destiny dice on average. 
um, which is nice. And obviously the dispel didn't remove the inner spell, but if you've got like two, you know, two and a three or two twos and you fancy going for that better, you know, three or four, you know, that that is a way to, to get value out of that. And as you say, over the over the five battle rounds, it's it's really nice. You can stack that with Eternal Shroud as well to roll those five ups as well. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's also worth mentioning that um, the Lord of Change is 400 points, so you can ally him. So uh, you can put the chicken yep. into a forest in the spoilers and be like, pew pew from, from the invisible forest. It's great. I've well, tried it with Kairos. I... He was 400 points, and uh, it was fun. But yeah. Yeah, or you could do the Casty faction because he's gonna he's gonna give a plus one to all Zinch wizards. Oh yeah. So it's not sp yeah, yeah. specific, and so actually you're gonna bring to slaves um, a bunch of plus ones to cast, which is something that they struggle with. Um, well, if you're talking about Cabalus, then that's also stacking yeah, with your yeah. That's also stacking with your own built-in. You know, cut some dudes, cut a fool, and yes. get between plus one and three to cast. So suddenly you're on plus two to four. Right for, right for all your for your wizards in question yeah. there. Um yeah, and he also has some interesting like so I like the I like both of them. Um and I think they're well costed for what they're doing. Yep. Um because like I don't know a world where I'm running a Lord of Change and I haven't put an arcane tome on him. Right? And so they're both three cast wizards to me. Like when hmm. I look at this, they're they're both three cast. And so it's just gonna be the question of uh, is the 35 points worth that Oracle? And I think it is. Um, but I, I will I, give you the you... world where I didn't put a tome on a bird, but we'll get to it in a minute. That's because oh, somebody else got to the book I... first. Oh, that's fair. <laughs> um, but then, but I like the, uh, I like the rod of sorcery. Like that's a nice number of like 18 inch attacks. Yeah. Um, I, uh, like in general, I'm a buyer for both of these guys, which I didn't anticipate that I would be. Agreed. I haven't run the double chicken list yet. Uh, I've got a couple of Lords of Change. I'm going to try out the, the actual double chicken list here and see how I like it. So you can uh, oh, quit. not to, not to go uh, again into the Gilo Summoner thing, but you can actually get a chicken a turn. So you can get up to like four chickens and be like, pew, pew. <laughs> great stuff. I, I need more chickens, clearly. OK. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, chaos spawn is chaos spawn. He, the important part about Chaos Spawn is that like he uh, he heals all wounds if he's uh, near a wizard that casts uh, within nine inches of it and doesn't uh, and the spell is unbound, which is fun. Um, and That's, then his little freakish mutations yeah. does mortal wounds, which is cool. So, good stuff. It's fine. It's he's, now he's, like it. It has potential to kill something. Yeah, and it's he, important. It's yeah. important because your general can become a spawn and still be a general, so you can complete the battle tactic. This is a good point. Yes, I mean the the mortal wounds on a six and the fact that he can he heal his five wounds. I'm not sure how often he's really going to be healing, but hey, the the mortals on six is cool all the time because oftentimes this dude is going to exist as something that popped up, you know, basically in an enemy unit. Um, so that's cool. Uh, all right, the first hero you I don't like. Uh, this guy. The Fate Skimmer, Herald of Zinch on Burning Chariots. This is our Burning Chariot boy. Eight wounds, four up save. He has attacks. They're, they're whatever. Uh, that's how I would rate that. Um, he, this is the first time we'll see Arcane Tome. Not the, not the <laughs> universal magic item Arcane Tome. The special ability Arcane Tome, because apparently we just ran out of words. We couldn't call this one Magic Book or something, or <laughs> Secret Book. Uh, Codex Arcana. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, there you go. How neat. Nice. Um, like we couldn't open In, the, invert, the invert the word order. <laughs> sure. And use synonyms. The Tome Arcana. Yeah, we couldn't. We couldn't just open up like Google <laughs> and type <laughs> synonym, yeah. magic synonym. <laughs> okay. So, anyways, there are arcane tomes. We're going to see this ability repeated many times over the coming heroes. Once per battle, you can reroll one casting roll for this unit. If you do, add three to the new casting roll. Okay, cool. Um, all the versions of these guys have... It's not the same spell. It's not. It's but it's sort of variations on a high cast spell to a point. And so that becomes useful in them completing that thing out. Uh, the Wake of Fire is, his, is the 
burning chariot thing. It's when you when you move, you get to pick a unit that they've. Uh, when you make a normal move, run or retreat it, you roll a two up D three mortals, perfectly fine. Not that that's bad, by the way. I'm not I'm not undercounting that. Pre mortals are free mortals, and this dude does move fourteen inches, so it's pretty easy to get those on a unit. Uh, and then Zinch's Firestorm. It's a spell that has a casting value of nine and a range of nine. This guy is very Zinchy. Uh, if successfully cast, roll a dice for each enemy unit within range and visible to the caster on a two up. It's D3 Mortal Wounds. So he has like a, a pretty decent PBAOE. It's not bad. Yeah. Glutos is getting excited because this chariot has a monster keyword. So hopefully <laughs> there is good news for Glutos coming down there. Yeah. So it got slightly better from the old book. It got improved save and it's uh, spell went from 3 plus to the model 2 plus, and then its wake of fire is now on uh, retreat and run as well. So it's it's better, and, and the screamers are better as well. So, like, it's better, but uh, uh, I just don't see like a unique selling point with this guy. Yeah, I, I feel it's, while it's better, there are other more improved wizards and more high yeah. utility wizards that I would go for in, instead. <laughs> The only use for him is to bring a burning chariot as battle line, and we'll get to that. But that it just makes me sad. Like to talk about anything to do with burning chariots. Oh. Well, keep in mind, Autumn. It's D three mortal wounds to multiple units. That's the trick. That's that's why it's it is a, it's a PBOE because it hits multiple units around him. But yeah, this guy's a pass for me. I do think it's fun that it's that he does make burning chariots battle line. If you if that's a if that's an army. You want to run for fun. I like stuff like that where it's like, hey, if your if your image of Zinch that's in your mind is like a lot of flamers and and uh, and screamers, you like you want to go demon heaven. You want a bunch of burning chariots sort of careening across the field. I like it when they let us play that thing. There's somebody who that's that that's their fun version of the army, and it's nice that it's there and you could you could see it like happening. It's cool. It also lets you avoid GV, which is actually something that's sure. not real easy in this army. Yep. Yep. Okay. Sure. Uh, all right. Now let's talk about my dog, my new favorite buddy. I need to convert up more of these guys because this is this is this is my pick. He's been my mo one of my most frequent summons. I love this dude. And that is the Flux Master, Herald of Zinch on disc, six wound hero with a four up save and a sixteen inch move. I mean, that's a that's a profile I can get behind. Still only a single cast wizard, but he's got the arcane tome thing that you can reroll. By the way, the <laughs> fun story. One of my games, this moron. Okay, the I love this dude, but I, I had him actually in a list, and he started the game by miscasting, and I didn't want to. It was just a throwaway spell. I didn't want to use his reroll yet, and I was like, fine, whatever. You miscast. It doesn't matter. It wasn't that important. It's not actually targeting anything of value. Like I'll just let him miscast, and he he took three wounds. I'm like, okay, fine, sure, whatever. And then the next round, I roll to get his spell, because he's where I want him, which is on an 8. He misses it. I re-roll it into a miscast. <laughs> I'm like, <gasps> this moron. <laughs> How many mortals was that? <laughs> uh, he that The second time it was only once. He was fine. He lived. He never died the whole game. But I was just like, what an idiot. This guy is not. He needs to go back to magic school. Okay. Anyways, the reason I love this dude uh, is, first of all, he, he does have, again, more shots. All these guys have little shots. Again, there's lots of people with lots of ranged attacks. His is just three attacks on fours and fours and egg one, but it's just more shots with an 18 inch range. So more shots are good. Shot, 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 shot. Uh, but at 170 points, I'm taking him for Blue Fire of Zinch, uh, which is a spell that has a casting value of eight and a range of 18 inches. Pick one enemy unit within range and visible to the caster and roll nine dice. For each five plus, that enemy unit suffers one mortal wound. And. The caster's army receives one fate point if it is a Disciples of Zinch army. Uh, beautiful thing here is the Mortal Wound does not have to resolve. Let's just be super clear on that. You are rolling the dice. You then check your number of five ups. You apply that many Mortal Wounds and then gain that many fate points. Then then they, whatever. They, they make their wards. They do whatever they do. Yeah. Who cares? I'm still getting my fate, homie. This is, which is, is it, what I'm here for. Is it, is it one fate point per five plus? Yes. Yeah, I guess yeah. it is. I guess so it is the way that it's written. He's enabling yeah. your, it is. your summoning engine really nicely. I think I yeah. would consider him in the starting list and maybe summoning the other um, 
Yeah. Herald. This is the, this guy is literally why I'm taking the portal in my life. Yeah. <laughs> sure. To, to oh. do it from turn one. Yep, I can see it. I blue fire of Zinch is lit. This is the hottest fire. Uh, I love it. I'm all about it. It is a fate engine. It's a good like it's a decent enough damage spell too. By the by, like it's not terrible. It's it does a yeah exactly. It's like three four mortal wounds. It's not terrible for for one of these little doofuses, right? And he's got the tome to power it out in case you happen to not be able to get there between beacon and everything else that's going on. So, yeah, yeah. It's, he's great. It's one third. It's one third of the summoning engine, uh, basically. The summoning engine being the Curseling with Demagol, uh, Kairos, and this guy. That's yep. that's the summoning engine. Uh, if you cost everything, it's average of thirteen summoning points. Now, yeah, I, 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 by the way, Nico, I did, I, well, I have settled on most of the time getting this guy into my starting list and then also summoning like another one of him later is usually what ends oh, up sure. happening. But, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, just, I like him there again because, yeah, you can blue fire pretty early. Uh, okay. Daniil, help me out. I tried the changeling my first game. Okay. Mm -hmm. How did it go? Uh, bad. It went poorly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is there a point to this guy? What am I missing? Is this guy secretly there's, good? Help me. No. Well, I, I there's one idea I have. Only one. I'm ready. And because I cannot I crack this guy. Like he's a two cast so, wizard for 160 points, but his special abilities are just like I do not understand this. So you you take gnashing jaws and you meme. Got it. Okay. Right. That that's that's it. I yeah. I don't know why they didn't change him. I don't know why they decided that he's worth his points. He was he was taken in a list when he was 120 points, and he was the cheapest two cast wizard. That was the only point to him. Yeah, I yeah, don't I now. Say, yeah, it's a challenge. I do not yeah. get this guy. This is such a beautiful model, by the way. It's one of my favorite models in the whole oh. range. And I just do not understand him. He well, he pops back in at the end of your first movement phase. He has to be in your opponent's territory. Yes, he can be close. Like, he can be set up up to three inches away. And then in their enemy hero phase, he can make a unit have be neg one to hit and half move. But if they're nine inches away, it's like most units in the game will still get to within three with them. I assume he tries to redeploy away to stay alive and often fails and then gets flattened. Yeah. I mean, yeah, sure, it can distract a unit for a round. I'm not sure that's 160 points, but it can do it. Yeah, so if it, it was... Off, maybe, but it's, it's very situational. Yeah, I mean, if it's me... A bear map, maybe, where it's a quarter of their army, potentially, that is, is half move, but it's, it's really... When you've got so many other compelling heroes in this sort of point slot, and you, you may only want to take three heroes for... Core battalion reasons, so yeah, it's a hard sell. Yeah, I mean, I think that it's anti giant, anti iron jaws tech is what is what I think this is, and the, in the way that you utilize it is you go first, and then you shut off their mighty destroyers and all that, utilizing um, being within twelve inches and having movement. Like I think, I mean, I think that's the like that is the space where this guy shines. The question is, is is he worth his points, and is he good in a generalist list? I don't know that he is, but in like a sideboard world, or in like a two list <laughs> format, like yeah, like he, he has, yeah. he, it's just he's a like he's a niche performer. Like he he performs yeah. very specifically in a certain space. I'm fine with that. I, I, I like that read. Unfortunately, most people haven't embraced the two list format. I mean, I, I'd love it if they would, but it would make this guy actually good because you're right. He'd be some hot sideboard hate, right? Uh, yeah. But yeah. like a generalist, I just most you could go easily the whole tournament and this guy having no purpose in your list. If it was like half charge rolls as well, then maybe. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Or Absolutely. if he if he brought a unit with him when he teleported. Sure. Like, I could think of 10 other ways we could have written this where I would have been like, yes, he's useful, but we didn't write yeah. any of those. I mean, no, they, they, like, you, just copy. you have the ability to move your army 
per, no, you're fine, uh, Daniel, pretty significantly, right? With Silver Tower, with um, with him. And so you could actually do like a castle shift, right? And he could be if in part of the thing that's going to all shift over to their side or to a heavy flank. And so like if you paired him with a with a gone on disc with some with some meat in the in the with like double cock in the tower, like it could be scary, right? Um, because then you you're like hindering, you can throw some mortals, you can do some damage and come in hard on a flank. And he's actually semi shielded back there um, behind behind some of the meat. And so that like there are options is what I would say. I don't think that it's necessarily good. <laughs> but there are options. Yeah. Like I don't skip. know. Like at 160, that's the problem. Yeah. Skip. All like, right. Let's keep going because we got a lot of dudes who are going to be better than him <laughs> who won't be so contentious. All right. The change caster, our regular herald. So we're down to the the. We've stepped all the way down from chariot to disc to foot. Uh, now here with this little boy. Uh, still a single cast wizard, still has his little shooty shoot attacks, still has the arcane tomy thing, and he has the the weaker fire, which is the pink fire. Casting value of 7 and range of 18 inches. If successfully cast, pick one enemy unit within range of visible the caster. Subtract one from save rolls for attack to target that unit until your next hero phase. So another option for minus one to save. And this is the one that I, I would consider summoning fairly early on if it's if I'm not playing as Nighthawk or you know, where it's where I want to crack crack some armor yeah. on a Gargan yeah. or a, a Stilodon, say. Uh, really it's useful stacked. to have in a... Yeah. You can stack minus one save with like Purple Sound and uh, Arcane Suggestion and then the Tangers on this just being like no command abilities here. So yeah, he's really good. I use him. Uh, he's nice. No one targets him because there are bigger targets to target. Yeah. So yeah, he's just really good. Uh, yep. Funny enough, uh, there's there's that keyword there. There's that monster keyword. <laughs> yeah, so the guy, on, the guy on disc is not a monster. The guy on chariot is a monster. The guy, mm -hmm. the guy, I feel that one might be a copy paste error. Yeah. Maybe. I just double checked. Just the chariot is. That would I just double checked on the, on the app, and he's a monster there as well. <laughs> So he's going to roar and stomp. Yes. Very scary little... Well, that moon face is real scary. He's got such a big head. He wants Check to tell out. you... He really wants to tell you about the new deals at McDonald's. He is very excited about it. Uh, at any rate... Uh, yeah, he's he's one of my first summons, absolutely. I think I think his spell is great. I don't know that I put him in my starting six, but I think he's definitely a, a hot up, a hot, a quick summon. Um, Blue Scribes. Uh, love the blue scribes. Yeah, hard thumbs up from everybody here. 16 inches, 5 wounds, 4 up save, just fine. Like, their attacks are not why we took them. Whatever, whatever. They're a single cast wizard. Okay, fine. Um, the, if this unit's part of a disciples is each army, each time an enemy wizard casts a spell within 9 inches of this unit. Uh, uh, and that spell is not unbound. You can roll a die. On a 3 up, you get a fate point. So he can give you two fate points out of enemy stuff, but he's got to be like danger close to achieve that. So I'm not sure that's the use. Uh, we're taking it for the second you, ability, which is scrolls of yeah. sorcery. You pair him up with this changeling. You're like, oh my heroes, just just, throw just sitting heroes. on your line nine inches away, <laughs> just suicide heroes. Yeah, yeah. Why we took this yeah. guy is obviously the scrolls of sorcery, which is he knows all the spells. From the lore mm -hmm. of fate and the lore of change. Exactly. Just boom. This bursting with knowledge. So he's got both spell lores. In addition, once in each of uh in each of your hero phases, so five times in the game, uh, instead of making a casting roll, you can say it will read from its scrolls. If you do on a two plus, that spell is successfully cast and cannot be unbound. Uh, so I would Nash. point out that yeah. it is when he attempts to cast a spell. Not a spell from the lores. Oh yeah. So that can be endless spells as well. Uh, this yeah. dude is he's uh, he's real good. He's real good. Phenomenal. Yeah. An ally for slaves, an ally for yeah. for even flesh that's pushing them up a tier just by by uh, being there with the, with the first prince as well. Suggestion or you know, end the spells on a two up is incredible. Yeah, yeah, in the first prints as well, he's just really good yeah. there as well. 
it's yeah. Uh, they replaced so he lost his uh, negative to cast for enemy wizards, and they replaced it with the fate point thing, which is great. It's gonna come up sometimes, but sure. uh, when it comes up against like Lumineth, you'll be like, "Hey, great <laughs> stuff! Thank you for your uh, mortal wounding to me. Uh, I'll die happily now by summoning more pink words." Um, and then the second ability, uh, he gets to learn spells, right, on a 4+, plus, which I always forgot to do, so now I just know everything. It's fine. It's good. Yep. And he lost the, the rerolls bubble, which is uh, less oh, concerned yeah. as well. But what he's gained with that 2-up of both spell laws is just incredibly useful. Yep, agreed. Yeah, awesome. Uh, awesome as I an mean... ally, awesome in army. Love this dude. He's expensive for one second. Like, I don't know. I, I hear, I know, understand that he's a toolbox caster. I understand he has any, any solution. I understand all of that. But a 161 cast, like that, that, I don't know. I, well, Zinch is expensive. And, and like, I, I get know. it, but you pay for the utility. There ain't cheap heroes yeah. in this book, homie. The single yeah. cast dude on foot that we just talked about was 140. Right, and and he's just like some yep. doofus on foot with a five up save. He also, he also provides the locus as well, so that's that's worth him. He does, yeah, that's yes. true. Yeah, this no, guy's I, I like, like lightning fast with an incredible mm-hmm. utility ability and just bring in knowledge. Uh, because yeah, again, yeah. knowing uh, knowing everything from both lores is so strong. Um, yeah. The fact that he's that's a demon who's him. still reaching into the mortal lore and giving you more options yeah. for glimpse, for suggestion, for shield is just so strong. Yeah, I really like him in in the spoilers being like arcane suggestion. Mm. Yeah. yeah, from pushing. from inside of the invisible terrain, it's just amazing. It's just great stuff. Pushing spells through the auto the auto unbind attack list and also through Seraphon. Yeah, infinite range um, on binds is incredibly useful in those matchups. So. Yep. All right. Let's keep going. Uh, horrors of Zinch. Yes, this is the next thing. Um, they're horrors. They they are horrors. They, I, is there any change that happened to this scroll? I don't think not so. From the last, not, from not from the last... Not from the last update. update. Yeah, it's still the same nope. scroll, right? They uh, still split. So, can we talk real quick about... So, they're, they're 250, 150, 125. Yep. Battle line of pink. Is the correct answer with horrors of Zinch to take to buy the unit at two fifty and take nineteen pink horrors and one blue horror? That way they are not battle line. You shut off their battle yep. line because you can you can technically include any mix of the things and that just sets their points value. So taking nineteen pinks and one blue is a legal thing to do. And then that shuts off their battle line nature, and they can't be they can't be bounty hunted anymore because they're not veterans. I absolutely agree. Yeah, it's very tempting. And then, it? and then you put the five up board on them. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and then they become like an old school nightmare. I don't know that ever take more than twenty because you're paying like five hundred points for that 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 pile, right? Um, well, but, if you take one blue, you can't reinforce them twice. So, you... right, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, excellent point. Thank you. You're you're absolutely right. So, like, that feels really sticky, gummy, ridiculous, you know, uh, especially if you happen to be in uh, host duplicitous, because now you can't retreat away from that gummy nonsense either. And it's very tough, as you mentioned, especially if, like, shield happens to get anywhere near this unit. Uh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Um, that's just a unmovable, unretreatable tar pit, right? In a world where they can't be bounty hunted, I, I think that's right. Yeah, I think the worst, like even worse than that, is in doubles. You just put the wording brand on them from from Hell of Heart, and you just like you die now, like you did with <laughs> Bundo. Yes, yeah, it's great. Uh, Andrew yells, "As far as I know, yes, this tome will be live at the GW event in Chicago in two weeks because they don't have a cool off period for the FAQ. So as far as I know, they it has to be released." I think is the the rule, and it will be obviously released by that Chicago event. So, yep. Um, yeah, that's one. Worse. Oh, good. Please. There's one thing to note. Um, their hit value stayed at five plus, but we lost the bubble reroll. So they're worse at that, but they're better at staying alive. How the the new shield of fate works. So, yeah. There we go. Yep. 
Which is fine. They were always a tar pit anvil unit to me anyways. I mean, like, yeah, they can do a little damage, but that isn't why I took them, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. All righty. Uh, Burning Chariots. Uh, 180 points. Battle Line of Fate Skimmer on, uh, on Burning Chariot General. Um, nope. I mean, like again, if it's something that you love, cool. I'm I'm in for it. Like I'm glad that that is your thing, but I don't. I'm not a buyer. I, I really love them, but um, what have they done? I'm, I'm this is this one thing spoils most of the book for me <laughs> because um, I have seven of them, and I can't see me buying them unless they drop them like one fifty. Yeah, it's it's a six wound chariot. It has a nice mortal wound thing. Yes, they can get the the billowing warp flame bonus to hit a five or more models, which I, sh I should state that's how all the flamer things work now. It's just one yeah. to hit if it's five or more models. They all just have the same sure. exact ability, but they do have different hit and wound rolls just to keep you confused. Can I run through what it gained and lost? Yeah, and please. And then, uh, so it gained an extra, uh, well, plus one to save, right? Yep. So it was a five up, now it's four up. And um, it also gained... Um, slightly easier to hit values on the Lumpy Bites for Screamers, right? So Screamers got slightly better, and Flamey Maw got slightly better. So that's good parts. Bad parts is um, that it lost two attacks on its shooting attack, so yep. that's worse. And then also there is no reroll bubble that I mentioned before, right? So uh, it's worse at shooting considerably. And then also it's Mortal Wounds for unexplainable reason. Yes, it got like changed to normal move, run and retreat, as it should have always been. But now it does one mortal wound on the two class. Like, what's the point now? I, I yeah. just don't get it. It's just sad. Yeah, it's I, a. I'm, I'm just it, really. It's really a skip. Sad. It's a skip. Why, yeah. why, why are we? Why are we spending time on the burning chariot when our favorite little book good boys are Bad. on this page? Uh, which it's is sad. It, 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 that's fair. We can mourn it for a moment. Okay, we've mourned. Now let's move on to Screamers, who I think are sweet as. Uh, so Screamers, 60-inch move, 3 wounds, 5 up. They, they're little Lamprey Bites with 3 attacks, 3s, 3s, Neg 1, 1. They are 100 points for these guys. Uh, they are Battle Line and Host Arcanum. And they have Slashing Fins. After this unit has made a normal move, run, retreated, or made a charge move, pick one enemy unit and roll a dice for each model in this unit. Uh, that pass across any models in that enemy unit for each 4+, plus that enemy unit suffers one mortal wound. Okay. Daniil, sell people on the Screamers. I know why I like them, but sell so people on I've, I've read that as um, normal move, uh, run, and retreat. Do a mortal wound on a 4+, plus. and I was like, great. And uh, along with Lamprey Bites being 3-3, three, three, minus 1-1, one, one, I, was, I was like, great, this is a good unit. I'll, I'll buy it, and then I'll... Uh, well, I already have them. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll put them in the list and they'll do great. Then uh, not long ago, I was like, oh, it's uh, there's like, or made a charge move as well. And I was like, okay, okay, this, this is probably one of the, the, I think I would say this is the most improved unit in the book. Magister? Oh, well, I, wow. Okay, that's a bold call. I oof, I've got opinions on the Magister, but I love these little dudes. They're little mortal wound machines now, man. These guys are great. They just zip around and just yeah. just do damage. Like they get there. It's great. Like on average, as if you have the movement, you're gonna do a one mortal wound per model in the unit. Because if you have the movement, her. you'll pass over them, come back, and then charge. And assuming your charge is farther than three inches, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you can all pass over and then scoot back back to the to the base base contact. And so, yeah. um, on average, you're going to roll double your the models in the unit of dice, and on a four plus. Hence, on average, you're going to do one mortal per model in the unit on, when they come in for the charge. Yeah. In addition, of, in addition, to remember that you points. have uh, destiny dice. Yeah. So you can guarantee that long bomb charge. So you'd be like, okay, you have that here like 25 inches away. He's dead now. Right. Also, you uh, can't do anything quick, about it. On a quick practical note, units like this or like Felbats or like Hex Race can very easily fly over a unit that would otherwise want to redeploy. 
because they can go 22 with a with a run, whether through the command ability or uh, Destiny dice, or 21 inches is probably ample, and go behind the unit that would otherwise redeploy, and then suddenly it finds it can't walk backwards, it can't go within three, and then your, your hammer can come up and actually hit it without any redeploy or minimal redeploy risk. So, and it's 100 points, so yeah, I'm a buyer. Yep. Screamers also, are great. I love them. Also, Eternal Conquerors, uh, Screamers, great as well. Like, units of three of them in Eternal Conquerors, you're like, okay, this is nine wounds, and then I'll slash you a bit, so your ten model unit is now eight, and I, and I out mm. great. Massive utility. Yep. Yeah, on the, on the utility versus points thing, these guys just blow it out for me. I, I love them. In a book full of expensive choices, they, they fill a very necessary slot. Let me just say that as well. So how many units of these are you taking, Vince? Three? 18? Uh, I, I played around with a couple different. Uh, yeah, I don't have a, I don't own 18 of them. I played around with a couple different times, uh, and, and I, I like them. I, like, they did really well for me. I was just very impressed. So that's when I became a buyer. Um, and I was only yeah, running I, I will, nine total, so. I will try a spam with them, because it's funny. I have 60, so I'll be like... Yay. I'm sorry, how many? 60. Six zero. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't 16. fit it all on the list, wow. but... But you Woo! can summon some of those. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, the Exalted Flamer and the regular Flamers. Uh, just for fun, they decided to confuse us here. The Exalted Flamer's Billowing Warp Flame is four attacks on fours and threes, neg one, d3 damage. The regular Flamers are three attacks each, threes, fours. Sure, why not? Uh, no rend D3 damage. Remember, both of these will get uh, will, will get a rend buff in Eternal Conflag, uh, wherein the Flamers are also Battleline. They are very expensive um, because they're it's six wounds for 190 points. Like it is not cheap. Um, if you have the, uh, they do get plus one to hit. So they can very like the regular flamers will very easily end up on twos to fours a lot because five models isn't that many even models in a. There's still plenty of five model uh, units around, and then they go up to four attacks each if uh, they're wholly within nine of an exalted flamer or any burning chariots, uh, which is fine enough, I guess. Um, yeah, I mean they make a lot of attacks and can do a decent amount of damage at range. They're they are what they are. They're flamers. They are expensive. They are quite literally the definition of glass cannons. One minor note I'll make is they are on a four up save now from the old five up save. Not the hugest thing in the world to their survivability, but it but it's a thing. It matters. They are very close to the stat line of a uh, long strike. Right. Both in terms of cost per move you get and save. You oh, get. sure. So it's it's basically the same thing. They just are lower range and uh, do different thing. I think overall there is a list where you take nine or eighteen of them, and you just buff them up to really be a menace, and you just flame things off the table. Um, yeah, it, it's it, I think they're good. I will say, uh, I think there yeah, could be an easy mixed powers. arms force here too, where you just have like, maybe you, so maybe you're getting towards summoning the exalted and not worrying about it at first. Maybe you're taking both. I don't know exactly what the list is, but where you just have a little power pair of these guys as a little hunter pack that can just, again, it's more ranged pressure. They're fast enough. They can get around, you know, you can like, they, they could, uh, they could pop out of, uh, they could be one of your units up in the Silver Tower we'll talk about in a moment, right? Um, or or the two units up in the Silver Tower, I suppose, uh, if you took both. And, you know, like, I think they can play as part of a valid sort of mixed arm strategy, even without the spam, is what I'll say. Um, I did run this little pack, like, that. I tried that little power pair in, in one, of the, one of the games. I liked it. It was just damage, you know? It's just like, okay, I need a little bit more shooting power to get there. These guys can help me close the deal, right? They weren't my whole strat. They were just part of a dynamic set of tools I could apply. So, Really good synergy with the Fate Master who will come on to for the plus one to mm. three and an extra third. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. And all I the think one thing worth mentioning is that a unit of six or nine of them is more survivable, but also you can fold them back. So yeah. 
it's it's very good synergy there. So that would be a combo I would go for if I wanted some uh, shooty focused list in eternal conflagration. Yep, makes sense. Mm-hmm. Okay, the Gaunt Summoner, uh, also known as my new favorite boy. Uh, the Gaunt Summoner is on, on disc is the one that I particularly love. I don't, I don't, I don't think I would ever take the one on foot. Uh, but here we are. <laughs> Um, it's 16 inch move, six wounds, four up save. So cool. Um, he again has a little shooting attack out of his chain staff. So everybody gets the fun little 18 inch shooting attacks. It's just the name of the game in Zinch. Uh, he has this little book of profane secrets where he gets to add one to casting, dispelling and unbinding rolls for this unit. In addition, he knows all spells from the lore of fate. Notably, he is a demon, so he will get to pick one spell from the demon lore, and then he knows everything from the mortal lore, so he will have, you know, uh, basically a total of, with nothing else going on, like eight different spells he can he can pick from to cast. Uh, he has a thing called Lords of the Silver Tower, which is a complete goofball ability that uh, is a wacky, it. fun, Love chaos it. ball time. Um, in the Nurgle game... Just for just for wacky fun, I charged his Lord of Afflictions, like straight up, okay, and was like, "I'm gonna roll the dice and bet that I can live. Bet that you can't kill me in a round, but that you will do some damage to me, and then I'm gonna roll this dice at you and see if I just kill you outright." It's it's really fun that the Soul Render uh, ability is similar to this. When you're doing the two the two d six and trying to beat their wound damage or something, yeah, it's like a a gore grunter or a hero. It's really fun. Yes, so. Uh, it's a goofball ability. It won't do much most of the time. Who cares? It's fine. Um, the fun part but is when it does. But when it does, it'll be a great yeah. moment. Yes. One thing to mention is that if you kill a small Marathi, then the big Marathi doesn't die because the small one wasn't slain. Uh, so instead, it just confused because it's alone now. Right. <laughs> She's just sad. <laughs> Uh, and the important part is, yes, the hero, like normal, cannot be returned. If you are allowed to bring back slain models, the model cannot has not been slain. So, um, no, sorry, Scar, Bloodwrath, you're you just stay dead this time. Should have said no. That he's not Everybody dead. Gone. He's trapped in the tower. Now he has to go play that board game. <laughs> Great for a narrative event, definitely. And just quick, what we should have mentioned earlier is there are so many designers notes in this now, which is wonderful. Yes, yeah. yes, absolutely. The the interesting thing about this guy, he still has, by the way, is like five up uh, uh, horde killer spell, so that's fine. Yeah. But the silvered portal is really the new action that's interesting. This is the boy. If, if this isn't the definition of a sort of risk reward mechanic, uh, after you've deployed this unit, when you would set up another friendly Zinch unit that is not a monster, yeah, you can I realize say, I can't do double talk. Yeah, you cannot. I was going to wait to correct you, but it's fine. Uh, you can say that it is in the Gaunt Summoner Silver Tower as a reserve unit. Up to two units can be set up in reserve in this way. At the end of your movement, at the end of any of your movement phases, you can set up one or more of these units on the battlefield, wholly within nine of this unit and nine inches from all enemies. And then, as normal, at the start of the fourth, blah blah blah, they die. Right. Okay. So, Daniil. Do you like the Gaunt Summoner? Question the first. Second, I think, do you like the Silver Portal? I think he's about 40 points too expensive. Okay. He is pricey at 275. You're not wrong. Yeah. I, th- I think it's too risky. I might try it, but I, I don't think it's very good. And he lost the... Important to mention, he lost Arcanite. I think you mentioned it before. Yep. He lost yeah, Arcanite keyword, so he's um, locked out of the good command abilities as well. So... The I'm, I I have mixed feelings on him. I will try him out, but I I, I think he's like at least fifth on like the, the heroes for me on okay. the ranking of heroes. Maybe seventh. <laughs> of the nine plus. Yeah, he he's uh, exciting for me. I, I think the reserves angle is the bit that really got my attention. So, you know, true glass cannon, you could put a true, the obvious one is to put shooting units in, and that, that sure. will certainly work. But the ability to put in like true glass cannon units that would otherwise risk getting shot off, like and potentially even enlighten on foot. I'm going to try them. I'm going to try it you know, regular enlightens on discs. You know, coming nine away, and then you know you got your destiny dice to make the charge. Yep. Um, you know, no, you know, no corn demon prints, no negative modifiers to worry about. They are making that charge. So I really like that aspect of it. Um, and potentially other things you could hide in there. You know, you got the whole 
gamut of uh, coalition units that you could also put in the, in the tower. Yep. I only totally agree that it is, um, you know, match up uh, dependent. If they've got you know sniping abilities, if, if you're playing the mirror against Skyfires that they'll come onto, that would be challenging. Or you know, Luminous potentially, uh, Seraphon, and so on. Um, but at least he's. But got, you'll know he's, that. He's got the four up save, so there's there's possible ways to get him up to like plus three to save, even if they go first into him, and if he's behind a you know, cover and so on. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you don't have to put the well, things in reserve. That's yeah, the exactly. yeah, like, yeah. yeah, like, so it's it is matchup dependent, but you like in that you don't have to bet the 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 farm, or yeah. or you put something in there to bait them, you know, to give them give them a reason to mo be a mm. first mover, give them a reason to you know like invite to them yeah. to commit to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I. I really love Silvered Portal a lot. Yes, it is risky, certainly. Um, there's no doubt about it. But the fact that this guy can scoot around very fast, like that is to say, you know, he can as be, he could just move 22 inches out and then he can... That bubble's pretty big of where he could throw the people. Um, I, I... Just as a as an interesting experiment, I put five Chaos Knights in there because Chaos Knights have a, a plus well, one to charge. charge built on the scroll. Yeah. So you're, you're rolling on a rerollable eight. Um, which is fine. Um, and they're obviously like with lances, it's, it's a decent, uh, sort of 11 attacks on force threes, neg two, two. Uh, it worked. I was perfectly happy with it. Like it was, a, it's, it was a perfectly good thing. I just basically kind of held him back until he wanted to get in there. I put that and I put a shooting unit in there. Right. And yep. so he just kind of yep. floated around and dropped the shooters where I needed to be shooters. And they dropped the knights where I need to be knights. Cause he doesn't have to, he doesn't have to disgorge the silver tower all at once. It's just how long are you willing to risk mm -hmm. him getting yeah. exploded? Right, which, yeah. which you can do based on whether he got um, treacherous bond off right. on, a, on a unit to keep him yep. alive. You know, it's gonna be very inefficient to try and yep. punch through that. Uh, bounty hunter uh, dragon ogres would be another uh, low hanging fruit that you could throw in there because they're not monsters. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, but, yeah, and yeah, so the shagoth is, the shagoth yeah, is yeah. but the normal dragon ogres yeah, aren't. Yeah. They could be bounty hunters. And you could do yeah. six of them for 150 points, right? That's so cheap. Uh, say so what? Cheap. They're so, so yeah, cheap. And, yeah, yeah. yeah, and so he and, could be their delivery mechanism to, to get them in, um, into yeah, that can, unit. You can give him, um, afterwards, next turn, you can give him the fire board as well. Here's 30 yeah. wounds with fire board. Enjoy. Yeah. Um, I mean, like, I love it. I love that it gives you options more than anything else. Um, and it gives you some counterplay. If I were to do it, I would have a melee unit and then I'd put like six flamers back there, you know, or exactly. something like that. Um, so that like you have some nice punchy hitting power popping out of the tower as well from shooting. So. Yeah. I think if I wanted to do like alpha strike list, I would probably take bridge over him though. Maybe. It depends. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. Or one both. thing I just, Oh, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Uh, one thing I just figured out, I just, uh, it's it's kind of spring in my brain, um, that I actually really like him, not in Zinch. No. Yes. In Beast. No. In, in Slaves to Darkness, I think he's nuts. Because mm -hmm. you, you just, uh, you take him in Idolators, because all of your cultists gain mm -hmm. the, the supercharge. Yeah, yeah, and the supercharge. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so you, you can supercharge some uh, iron golems and be like, here's 27 iron golems. Enjoy. Mm -hmm. Or Honestly. in the spoilers, <laughs> in, in the spoilers, you can hide him in trees so he can't be sniped and then pop out things out of the silver tower, like marauders and auto charge. Yep. Great. I think that's great. And he can bring, and he can bring uh, arcane suggestion too. So he can still yes. bring the, uh, uh, the minus the safe. Yep. Yeah. Yep. One thing to note is that the, the five up word spell doesn't work when he's an ally because it's tied to your destiny. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But Arcane Suggestion does. Okay. Uh, the Gaunt Summoner on foot is the other guy I talked about, but patently worse because he's on foot and only moves five inches. And so hence is useless for only 40 points less. I don't understand. Poor guy. Uh, oh, poor guy. Drastically worse as well. Yeah. So. He also gets one less wound because he doesn't have his disc. So, like, six up save, worse save, lower wounds, just terrible, hard uh, skip. Just hard skip. Okay. 
Magister on Disc of Siege at 145. This is the is this the guy, Nico? You're you're back in. Let's talk about this guy. Sixty inch moves. Most, the most improved. I mean, he's okay. not as good as the, um, either the Gold Summer or the. Um, I think he's or, the best or, here in the in five. the book. Oh, wow. Okay. I was gonna say most improved, but wow. Sir, maybe wow. maybe best. So much. Maybe I mean, maybe worse than the yeah. demagogue, depending on the FAQ. Okay. Yeah, I mean, or, yeah. The, the combo with like uh, with demagogue, um, you know, so you, when you're doing the, so for a start, you know, on that second spell, you know, you can turn off the downside if you wish. There's all the incarnate stuff, obviously. Which you know potentially yeah. you know, see, see sure. how that goes. Yeah, so let, let um, me read the ability real quick and then we'll talk through him, yeah. okay? So he's a six wound, four up save, sixteen inch move dude, because this is the disc version of the Magister. This is the new guy that came out not super long ago. And if the first casting attempt made by this unit in your hero phase is successful and a spell is not unbound, this unit can attempt to cast one extra spell in that phase. Now he doesn't keep going. Okay, it's just right. it's it's not like fifteen casts or something, it's just once. Cool. Yep. And if he does so and the casting roll for the extra spell is a double, then the casting attempt automatically fails and this unit is slain. And you can either, if that happens, you can choose for this unit to be transformed into a spawn instead of being slain, which is funny. Right. Um, and his spell is a D3 mortal wounds cast value seven spell uh, with a 18 inch range that. The first enemy model slain by the spell, instead of being slain, is turned into a spawn. Okay, so that's that's his thing. That's what he does. He's he's Mister Spawn guy, right? Either he, he becomes be one, the... or he turns enemies into one. He right. might be the best unit in the book. Yeah. Okay, sell me on this guy. Yeah. Look, shall I start off and then I'll hand over? Nico, to yeah, Daniel. sell me on this guy first. Yeah, go ahead, you, can co- you can cover the incarnate aspect of it, but I will just the, just sort of the baseline aspects of it. So, because of 1.64 core rule about triggered effects on, on uh, a dice roll, you can choose which one of the uh, abilities that goes off on uh, a double. So, if you take the correct command trait, which he is eligible for, unlike the Gaunt Summoner, one downside there, you can uh, have, when you roll that double on the second uh, cast, you whether you do it naturally or by accident, or whether you use Destiny dice, um, you can select the cult demagogue effect hence the auto cast instead of being slain uh, <laughs> or sorry being turned into a spawn which is a good start so you take take away the negative there which is very handy uh we'll come on to why you might want to actually let him be slain etc to nil in a moment so that's really nice but the other aspect of it is he's got the spell that used to belong to kairos or the, the aspect of creating a spawn which now is down to him and the sigil so the utility from that is incredibly high for pinning, uh, for pinning a shooting unit, for stopping um, unleash hell, uh, and also as we touched on earlier for um, stopping abilities that happen after a unit has been slain, because it's instead of that. So it will prevent um, things coming back to life. It will prevent if you do it to a, um, a daughter of the cane uh, blood um, stalker that model will never come back with a rally. So there's, there's all kinds of little utility from the fact that that model's not slain, plus the fact you drop a spawn somewhere. And now I'll hand over on the incarnate aspect. Oh, yeah, let's, the incarnate I'll, thing, let's let's talk yeah. about the incarnate nonsense. Okay, let's yeah. do I, it. I also want to mention that it's kudos to anyone who slays the four plus returning engine of the gods with this yes. guy exactly. and turns yeah. it into a spawn. I'm like, yes, please, That's please do it. Metal. Uh, I also Absolutely. played in in the game I played. Um, I've killed one of the dragon augers, and he couldn't uh, couldn't uh, four plus rally. Him, so that was yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, so the incarnate thing. I think the incarnate thing we need to skip to the next page for the foot one. But either case works. They're the same one. Cool. He's just less wounds and uh, worse save, and he's cheaper as well. Um, so with the incarnate when it just came out, I was like, so this guy just is just playing better when he's wild cool so how do i kill my own heroes and then i was like city's book sorceress cool um yeah. so this is basically the same but at any point in the hero phase so you can set up all of your things and then you do it right that's one thing another thing is that we have that spell set up right from um, from arcane armies um so you have yeah, your sigil set up somewhere already 
and then uh, you kill your own Magister. You know, one thing to point out is you don't choose turn to a spawn because then you're not slain. And for the incarnate to go wild, you need to be slain. So you choose for this guy to be slain, so you don't get a spawn. Mm -hmm. Oh no. But uh, your incarnate goes wild and then it uh, charges a spell. And then uh, potentially, depending on how the FAQ goes, it might be able to... Well, it definitely can charge because it's now being cast by your enemy wizard. Um, but it might be able to use its hero, uh, monstrous action um, to... Yeah. yeah, Rampage to uh, try to eat the spell. It can't dispel it because it's undispellable, but it might still be able to gain a level and not dispel a spell, which is uh, quite Yeah, I mean, I've, I've seen this take. I buy it about as... Like, uh, if you believe this take that it can... Uh, certainly it can charge the thing, no doubt. So let me let yeah. me walk through the steps here of what's going on for everybody because they might not be keeping up. Arcane Armies lets you start with the... and the spell in place. So you're going to start with Burning Sigil, basically in front of their lines. The Magister is going to cast, and then he's going to intentionally suicide himself on its second cast. So he, boom, he goes wrong. You have a cron, well, there's a cron spine in the army, right? So he goes boom and is dead. And he was the owner of the cron spine. He's the guy who brought this thing, right? So now the cron spine's wild. The cron spine now moves and then charges levels the. Up. Well, he, well, it he, levels up when he dies, right? No, he no, it goes up. wild. It just, oh, it goes wild. Up, right? He just goes wild. Yeah. Now we get to the part of the take that will absolutely be fixed, okay? Which is, you can you can charge the endless spell. You're that endless spell. That's valid. And the argument is, well, I can try to eat my endless spell, but since it can't actually be dispelled, if I still roll high enough, I then somehow magically level, even though I didn't eat the spell. And look, GW... For, for all of its faults, does not let crap like that fly because the number one rule is things have to make sense as to sort of what's happening in the world. And they get more powerful from eating the spell. You didn't eat the spell. You can't do it. Like, that's going to be how they FAQ it. It'll take five yeah. seconds for them to put that Re together, right? Reflex the yeah, mortal right. realms, first tenor, in the white dwarf. Yeah. Yeah. Even yeah. charging your own spell is still amazing. Sure. Yeah, exactly. And, and also, you, as well. you also have that portal there, right? So you can eat it. Yeah. Which is also custom value of five, so it's pretty easy. So that's really good. Um, the other thing is that until they fix the change caster, you can use your own change caster and gain a level that way. Um, because he's a monster. Yeah, so so that, that's hilarious. But uh, there is Can't another put him thing. Over tower, though, which is sad. Hmm. Banned. There is another thing why I really like the Magister. Specifically, well, both of them, really. They are. 145 points and 120 for the um, mm -hmm. for the guy on foot. Um, you essentially get a two caster for that right. many points. Yeah, that right. is incredible. I played mm -hmm. two magisters and a magister in this in in my list for the, the summoning, and it's it's really good with the cogs. It's you basically can reroll the you roll a double. You're like oh, no, I don't make sense. It's like yeah, yeah. it's really good. They're in gray seer territory of uh, efficiency for the points. You've sold yeah, me. Right. All right, you brought me around. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yes. All of those reasons. Like the double caster, the utility for the spawn, um, yeah. his mobility, his wounds and save. Like the his profile is amazing. Yeah. The, the guy on the disc. The guy, is, that dude is amazing for what he's doing. Oh, and he also has that extra 18-inch uh, shooting attack uh, as a double caster. Like, I, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, he is... He is one of the most efficient units in the book. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Yep. Let's talk Cursling real quick, because I like this guy too. Uh, Cursling, this new beautiful Cursling. Uh, great, great new model. Uh, five inch move, five wounds, three up save. Double caster, double unbinder, 180 points. Uh, has built in reroll for unbinding and dispelling, not casting. Mm -hmm. uh, important thing to note there, but but that's cool. Um, if he successfully unbinds a spell, he can immediately attempt to cast Glean Magic. Uh, even though it's the enemy hero phase, if that spell is successfully cast, it cannot be unbound. Glean Magic has a casting value of 4 and a range of 30 inches. If successfully cast, pick one enemy wizard within range invisible to the caster. Pick one spell from that wizard's war scroll that is possible for this unit to cast and roll a die. On a 2+, plus, the caster knows that spell for the rest of the battle. And then there's a designer's note about what does it mean to be able to like know a, a spell, basically. 
there is still a bit of a confusion uh, that I want to mention. <laughs> and uh, in the old FAQ, Zinch FAQ, uh, for the old book, they said that you can't learn any lore spells. But this version of the designer's note doesn't say that. It says that the spells require the caster to have the keyword, not the lore requires. So I think you can learn lore spells now. You can't you, because it has to be a spell on their war scroll. Oh, spells war scroll. that re- yeah. It's well, it says spells that require the oh caster from, from to that wizard war scroll. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yes. you, you're right. Yeah, I missed that. Yes. You're only yeah, okay. stealing things that yeah. are on the scroll. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I missed that. Yeah, well, hopefully not jump to situation good. where a war yeah, scroll. it's very good. It's it's very good. You like techless? Thanks. I'll I'll take the five up word for everyone, not just one unit. It's fine. Just thinking, Alariel's war scroll says, "Oh, I know every lore spell." Hopefully you don't get that extra mm. jump. Right, because it's still not their war scroll spell. It's still it's still just referencing it's back like to the it. Right, yeah. but all, with all those like wizards of uh Gur battle mages running around. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, like just steal Gur. it plus two run and charge. Everybody loves it. It's mo- that's like the most common spell in the mortal realms, apparently. Um so yeah, this guy's great. Good. He's he has a, a mortal arcanite leader, he can take uh demagogue, you know, he's yeah. he's Solid, like, good, yeah. and, and Real. you know, relatively Real. good save by the standards of this army, too. <laughs> so. Yeah, so you, you take Kairos, you take him or the Magister on disc, and you basically have your summon engine, right? You, you use Kairos's spells, and you take the magic on him, and you basically get two um, Destiny dies a turn, and then you use all of your doubles to fuel his uh, Demagogues, who basically get lots and lots of points, and then you have... Uh, on your Flax Master, you have the Journal Shroud, and you get your Fate Points, sorry, so Destiny Dice back, so you fuel your doubles even more, right? So that's the, that's the idea behind that one. Yep. Okay. Speaking of Fate Master, Fate Master, uh, our, our rare uh, person who doesn't have a cast uh, no, in this army. He, he does. <laughs> Is that, he I, does I, because I, you always... You always take an arcade one. Sure, <laughs> unless you, yeah. yeah, unless Tempt. you're taking the unless you're taking the demagogue combo, sure. taking okay, come on, this guy. So sixteen inch move, six wounds, three up save. This this sad old model. Hopefully, I would love to see a redesigned Fate Master. By the way, I think mm-hmm. this is, they should look super cool. Um, he's the important part. But this guy is again. He's uh he has a built in oh. four up spell ignore. floating plus one. And yes, he has a floating bubble of plus one to wound for all disciples of Zinch units, not just demons, not just anything. He's a little fast buff engine. Um, you know, he can fight like okay enough that that you know, just some chaff unit can't kill him and take him out. So he's not that weak. Um, but that's not why you take him. He he's there to be a little buff engine, to be a good sport hero and that kind of thing. I mean and there's he no... does a lot of damage. Yeah, like okay. everything is D threes. Like and it's and it's on average five attacks. I would say everything is D threes. I would say it the other way around with a negative tone, but yes. Yeah, he's in similar territory to the revenant in terms of uh, speed. Yeah, there's there's also speed. There's also no 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 pesky uh, melee words there, which is great. Oh yeah, buff is shooting as well, which is which is nice. It's just plus one to wound for attacks. I'm. I mean, he's more combat efficient than uh, a Stormcast hero at his level. Sure. He's, he's on threes and twos. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Totally fair. Uh, the Ogroid at 175 points, eight wounds, six inch move, four up save. Uh, again, has a pretty, like, this guy actually does have a pretty decent slate of attacks. Single cast wizard. Uh, he adds one to hit rolls and wound rolls. Uh, for attacks made with melee weapons by this unit, if any wounds or mortal wounds were allocated to this unit earlier in the phase, which is like oh, okay, sure. He I just guess. got a spell that does the same. Yeah. Uh, and then he has a D6 mortal wound spell. He's got a big fireball. It's just all, all D6 mortal wound spells in my mind when I read them. I read them and I just go, "Cool, it's fireball. Got it." Mm. Um, yeah, it's perfectly fine. He's a perfectly fine hero. We mentioned him earlier. The idea of like popping I out of tower him. and being a yeah. being a, a a fighty dude. Yeah, I don't dislike him. He's a beautiful I, model. I loved him Definitely when he Sorry. when he used to summon units of D six 
Bernie, yeah, the things. Brimstone Horrors. Yeah. That that was hilarious. Because mm. anything that can put a you know a unit within three inches of another unit or multiple other units can sure. be so infuriating for your opponent to deal with. Yep. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, let's see. So, and I agree. Oh, that is a really good point, Autumn. The like thousand suns casters would make excellent conversions. You mentioned the forty k conversion earlier. Those guys would make excellent fate master conversions. Yeah. Mm. Like, yeah, yeah, he's good. I like both these dudes. I think they can both find a place in particular lists. I think uh, fate master fits like most lists. While <laughs> Ogroid, you need a more specific idea. I'm with that. I'm with that. Would be if you're not taking a you know low drop. Uh, going for lots of utility MSU maybe toolbox Zangor Shaman 16 inch 6 wounds 4 up save he has his various and sundry attacks it's fine um, for some reason he brought his sorceress elixir instead of his arcane book it could have literally just been the exact same rule but we decided to make it different for no reason once per battle in your hero phase, this unit can attempt to cast one extra spell. If it does so, you can add three to the casting roll. So the key is the earlier guys were re-rolling and then getting plus three, but not gaining an actual extra cast. This dude does gain, can gain an extra cast, but then he gets plus three to that. Um, fine. Uh, and uh, he can add Zangor if there are Zangor to his D3 mortal wound spell if he kills people. Which okay. can go over the maximum size, specifically. I yeah. see no reason to take him whatsoever. I agree. Hey, this guy's a loser yeah. and, and, and here for me. Like, he's just not, he's not, he's not doing it for me. We've, we've mentioned too many better heroes. This guy doesn't hit for me. Like, like I would take well, he doesn't, over him. He doesn't give the buff anymore. No. Like, yeah. he used to give a buff to your Skyfires, right? And Enlightened as well. And enlightened, and he just doesn't do anything for them anymore. Yeah. And so he actually doesn't have a role in the army. That's At the all. sad part. His yeah. his role is to be the general in the beast army, so you can take Zangor's as battle. That's, that's it. So, but let's talk about two that I'm absolutely in love with, which is the the new two Zangor versions, specifically all of our disc writing Zangor. Like I'm I'm deeply in love with these guys. Uh so the Skyfires first up. Four wounds, now a four up save. They were five up saves before. Am I out of my mind or were they always four up saves? Yep. I don't know. No, they yep. were fives. Okay. They, they were fives. Five. Yeah. I didn't actually go look at the old book and pull it. I was doing all the comparatives off memory. So um at any rate, love it. Love being on a four up save now. Still have the arrow of fate, twenty four inch range, one attack, fours, threes, neg one, d three. So it's still the same shooting attack. Uh the I will state that the champion gets to add one to their attacks characteristic. So if you have a unit of let's say six, for example, you do get seven shots out of that unit. It's not nothing. Every extra shot counts. But guided by the future is my favorite new rule, and I wish they would just copy paste this into a lot of other armies in interesting ways. Uh, I don't want to rob from Zinch, but this is great. Ignore negative modifiers to hit rolls or wound rolls for attacks made with missile weapons by this unit. So. Just pause there for a second. Like, look out, sir. I'm not... I ain't, I ain't about that, right? Whatever, whatever. Anything. Negatives to hit and wound, you ignore. Unleash hell. Unleash hell. Yep, absolutely. Cover our uh, uh, garrisoning. Garrisons. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So these guys are little snipers. All right. No no negatives to hit or wound. You got negative a million to hit and wound. They're still on fours and threes. Or, But they can still gain bonuses, by the way. It's, it's like Nephi's mm. save thing. So you can still all out attack them and put them on threes and threes. They can only gain the positives, not the negatives. Yeah. Okay. Or say threes and twos, if there happens to be a Fate Master around. Anyways. Uh, then, at the same time, Ignore positive modifiers to save rolls for attack made with missile weapons by this unit. Hello. Yeah. I love this. Let me tell you what. The LRL save game. Save stacking? These guys right. were just yeah. like A+. Plus. I'm like, go ahead, spend your penny. What are you going to do? Nothing. You get nothing from that penny. That's what we call their, <laughs> their using their, their gold or their tokens or whatever, right? Because um, we just literally use pennies to track which units have done it. So it's been spend your penny is the joke. Anyways, the point is, yeah, no all-out defense, no Lumineth plus one, no best day ever. Yeah. Just get rid of all that crap. What does it say on your scroll? That's the number. And by the way, if I happen to have hit you with the 
uh, change caster spell or with or whatever he's called the um not change caster sorry the little whatever the yep. little pink boy spell the pink boy foot spell yep. yeah. yes or there's a sun around or you've been hit by the the other neg one to save like there's just so many options where you can just be taking negatives off of whatever it says based on your scroll right which is amazing and then um, by the way they still have the unmodified sixes do d3 mortals and it ends so fine great okay good these guys are awesome. I love them. And, and they're no longer an incredible melee unit as well. Sorry, Joe yeah. Cell. Which is I, I was running them. I was running uh, 12 or 18 of them, between 12 and 18 for the past couple of months. And then uh, in, in the Beast with a couple of uh, Mind Stealers. And it was funny. Yeah, I will still but, say they uh, like they do okay ish in melee still. Like they're fine. It's like they're 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 better than most shooting units because of their little discs, yeah. but yes, they're not melee fighters. That's that's they're they are a they are a ranged unit through and through. It's what they're here for. But I'll take the reduced melee power for the four up save every time. Yeah. 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 Uh, their beak their beak got better. That is true. Didn't the beak yep. used to be five and four instead of four and three? Is that right? Uh, it was four and five. Okay, four and five. Oh, there you go. Okay, got it. They bite harder now, I guess. Um, yeah, I love them. One ninety. Like I said, I took a couple. I, I I tried out six of them. Absolutely loved it. I, in my mind, six is the number. It's a big investment in your army. But God, did they did they just they made hay for me? One unit. One, one unit, unit or two. One unit or six. Yeah. So you think? Having all those attack on them on one unit of six is better than having an extra drop. I was yes, to correct. Shoot. I do. Yes, absolutely. Oh, okay. Yes, I was able to more efficiently buff them, keep them within what I needed to have mm-hmm. happening. Right with with that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I suppose right. you're not needing to fish out all that defense on one unit and then shoot a different unit because you're ignoring all that defense anyway. So right. yeah. that rewards the bigger unit as well. So interesting. Yep. Uh, well, yeah. One thing that would be fun is it's fun if you can like get them to spend all our defense on something you don't actually want to shoot with anything beyond the sky fires. Like you use like the Lord mm-hmm. of change sorcery attack to see if you can fish out the all out defense or yeah. something like that. Right. Because you, you like, I'm going to target them with the, the thing. And then in case you're making the attack and it's fun to see if you can pull it out. Cause they're scared of you just like getting a bonds or series of attacks out of that staff of change. Uh, or the rod of sorcery, whatever the heck it's called, the two d six shots mm-hmm. on threes and threes, right? And if they blow it, then you immediately go to the sky fires and be like, "Way to waste it! Here comes the the hurt." And then you yeah. actually are just using any other shooting you have on something else, right? Yeah, right. And you can, and you can stack the arcane suggestion minus one save on them as well. And be like, yep, minus two. Right. Yep. Yeah. So I'm I'm all about these guys. I love the sky fires. Uh, uh, I'm I'm about them. I'm I'm about him, about him. Uh, I'm a little sad about the four plus to hit, but maybe I'll come around. Yeah, it honestly most of the time I found again because I was running as a single unit of six. Uh, had well, a fate master. You in don't one of them. have to deal with penalties. Like, the key is yes. you're not worried yeah, about yeah, penalties, yeah. and you're and right. you're gonna spend the all out. Uh, all attack. You know, you know. Yeah, they were like basically my all out attack in the shooting phase threes. every round. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're yeah, gonna yeah. be on threes permanently. You'll pro- if if you're running them with a fate master, you could be on threes and twos reliably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. which is one strike. Yep, yeah. yep. And again, just the fact that they have a 24 inch range compared to the normal 18 inch kill box of yeah. this army, I actually it's funny, but that actually mattered quite yeah. a bit. And um, 16 inch moves, so it's 14 inch. Yeah, threat range. yeah, it's yeah. crazy, th- crazy threat range. Um, X's, which is great. I'm going to talk about the Enlightened on Discs and then I'll ask a question because these guys have sort of two new abilities as well. Again, four wounds, four up save, 16-inch move for the Disc Boys. Um, still, you know, perfectly good melee profile. Still four to hits all over the place, which is unfortunate in their case because they don't have the same the same getting away from uh, ignoring negative uh, or ignoring penalties. Uh, but babbling stream of secrets in the combat phase, enemy units within three inches of any friendly units with this ability cannot receive commands. Who boy, that is a strong ability. And then their thing is guided by the past where you can add one to wound rolls for attacks made with melee weapons uh, by friendly units with this ability. If you are taking the second turn in the current battle round, which is a very interesting trigger, which will put them on fours and twos. If you're in the second part of the battle round, all else aside, 
I, I think mm -hmm. Tom Tom may agree that uh, babbling stream of secrets is the kind of rule that Alinda should have instead of her, her actual one. It's incredibly yeah. useful. Sure. Right? sure. Not just about defense or attack, but also things like fire slayers doing their strike first and so on. And, and night hunt as well. And OBR command abilities and you know, it goes yep. on and on and on. Yep. And it's not just I pick think... one unit, it's every unit. Yeah. Within three. Everybody within three, yeah, the... no, no uh, discorporating and night haunts. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, it's yeah. so strong. I'm sorry, Daniel, go ahead. No, I, I was literally about to say discorporating. Oh, yeah. That, I think that one is literally the, the biggest one um, yeah. because you can do it on so many units, right? In uh, with If you have the, the repeating guy. Yeah. So, yeah. Is there a point to the people on foot that I'm missing? Uh, they're cheap they're in the silver tower because they're because they're cheap but yeah, um, because yeah they're more you could get six of them yeah yeah you they get six of them for 190. okay sorry yeah yeah go ahead absolutely. and they've got the um with the two inch range on you know more of their attacks relative to the the disc version as a six they could be slightly more efficient is the theory but you you are going to have to take this the um silver tower and put them in reserve and, and use the destiny guys for that yeah. so it is an investment but it's it's something i'm very keen to give give it give a try okay but it could just bridge or yeah bridge. yeah it's just if they're on the if they're on the table they can get shot off is the downside it's, it, it yeah but they're shooting them not your important heroes yeah, so I, I would be happy with that trade i would take two units of six and then just bridge them one turn after that. Yeah, yeah, it's it's nice. I, I like them. I think they're they have a spot now because before they didn't. So now I think mm. the, the foot version is useful. The disc version is very useful as well. I think the disc version, I probably would be tempted to run them as threes and yep. just be annoying with it. Yep. Um, the four plus save on them is actually pretty big because we, uh, when I played mm. the uh, the practice game. I played against beasts, and we used new profiles for for all of the uh, zangors for the beasts. And uh, I fought them, and uh, yeah, they they're tough with a uh, low defense. Yeah, they're hard to kill. No, which was surprising because he always used to die like nothing. Yeah, just mm -hmm. so easily. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. Again, the move to the four up save here. I really like their new abilities. The guided by the past is interesting. I think oftentimes I'm trying to go second in the round, especially in the current season, anyways. Mm -hmm. So, and then Babbling Stream is just so unbelievably powerful and useful for everything else you're trying to do. I I think Enlightened yeah, 180, I like them. I like them a lot. I, I agree. To me, they're three. They're 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 bought in threes. Um, and they're, they're weak. Their beak is two attacks now as well, which is hilarious. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I didn't catch that. You're I right. mean, what, what I'll say is that this is really, they're really interesting to me in Beast now. Yes. Because of the utility you're bringing, and you can still bring support. Like, you can still bring all of this in Beast with, like, a Fate Master ally, right? <laughs> like, no. to, like you can't. Or you can't, can you, you can't take no. Zinch? Only Slaves of Darkness. Only what? Slaves of Darkness. Slaves of Darkness only. Oh, no, no other allies. Mm. That yeah. was a miss. Sad. Yeah, because it was a Zinch Mortals. I, I, I think they're amazing in um, in beast regardless i think they yeah. are just really good uh at 215 points which they were in the former box uh i was not sold on them at 180 yeah top. i think right. they're uh, i don't think they're better than the old ones because the old ones used to be a massive hammer uh this is more techy but i think it's really good mm -hmm. yeah yeah they're, I think, one of the absolutely viable melee units, and and with with an interesting set of abilities. Again, you don't, you're not using them alone and just being like, "This is my super hammer. I can just throw it at anybody and crack whatever mm -hmm. shell is out there." That's not the point. You're using them in combination with other with other things you've done in other phases, magic to weaken them, you know, through an arcane suggestion or other types of things. To and then and then these guys go in and mop up. Yeah, yeah. It's it's also a lot less gotcha as well because before we're like, "Oh, you didn't fight first. I'm gonna smash you now." Or right. you, you fought first. Here was a hero. I'll just smash into the other side as well because it's any unit within three that fought. Yeah, uh, it, I think this this is more neat and uh, useful because it's mm -hmm. something that other things don't do, and it's like automatic roar as well. And how many times you failed that thing? Okay. Uh, and then let's go to Zangor, Zanny Zans. Uh, come in units of ten for 175 points. 
two wounds, five up save, still have their horrendously annoying weapon profile uh, non-sensory. Um, that's no. fine. I, it's you, you have to, to now select one, but you still have then the yeah. two in every five that have the savage rate plate and stuff. They, they, no, they don't exist. Okay. There's just paired weapons and the beak. Nothing else. No, okay. Nothing else exists for this profile. The other two you can just scratch out. Okay. Okay. To walk, walk me through. So first of all, yeah, these guys are 175 battle line. Walk me through why uh, you like this particular build. Are you just like juicing ornate totems? Is that the is that what you're taking them for, or what's the um, what's the play? Yes. Yeah. So well, uh, there are two plays here, right? So one is that the pair of savage blades, right? Uh, it's when you take two weapons uh, instead of weapon and shield, you lose the six plus ward, which is like okay, it's like no big deal. Um, but you get an extra attack, and you base three plus to hit. Right? So yeah. you all out attack, you get two plus to hit, and then you have a magister nearby, you have a plus to wound. Um, whereas they used to be four plus, four plus, and two attacks, right? So it's incredible improvement uh, in terms of number of attacks, but also, and, and reliability of attacks. Also, uh, Vicious Beak, went from 4 plus 5 plus to 4 plus 3 plus, and when you charge, you get an extra attack. Yep, on the beak. So now, yeah, so now you have 5 attack model, which hits on 2 plus 2 plus, or 3 plus 2 plus, if you have all the buffs set up. You can prevent them from doing um, command abilities, and you can save debuff them as well. So now you have some rend, and they have no auto defense, if you have the Vanguard Light and draw something. And you have essentially three champions in the unit, right? Because you have a champion that has plus one attack, and you have two mutants uh, per 10 that have an extra attack, right? So you have th uh, 53 attacks for 10 dudes that are quite reliable, and they cost 175 points, and they can run and charge. And you can destiny dice the rod, and you can destiny dice the charge if you want to. So it can be up to 24 inch threat range. But now in the app, they are dated to basically give them Brayherd back and Beast of Chaos back. So now they can get plus three inch move from the um, Shaman. And yep. yeah, it's just incredible. But okay. that's not all. I that's see where I all. went wrong. Because I, I, like, I did run these guys in Triumph, but I, I was like, okay, well, I'll take the Great Blades because those are, you know, like, it seemed yeah. like the, the choice, right? I was like, yeah, sure. I'll take the Great Blades. It's got the... You know, it's a two damage the rend weapon the two with rend, damage. right? Yeah. I was like, yeah, sure, of course. There's I'm only do one that. attack. But I hadn't, you're right, I hadn't thought through the math. I mean, 53 attacks out of a 10-man unit for 175 points is a wild number of attacks. That is a lot. Yeah. So many yeah. They are, they are Gallivats, so that one-inch threat range doesn't matter because you threaten yeah. into ranks anyway. So they're yeah. always getting all their attacks in. They die anyway? Right, they're they're not very survivable, but for 175 points, okay, and they can be expert conquerors, so you can take the objectives with them. But then there is the spice of ornate totems as well. Uh, so you take as many wizards as you can cram into the list, and then you take um, as many zangers as possible, and then you basically have them all set up in a very awkward uh, lozenge, and then you basically move up into the middle of the board, and you're like, okay. Are you going to stay there, or are you going to move away? If you don't move away, that's uh, 36 dice and 4 plus 1. Yeah, I liked, yep. I liked Zannies already. I think that Zangor are very playable in this current tome. Like, I've, I have I had some decent luck with them, but clearly I wasn't even taking them in their best form. So I'm, I'm even more excited now to get them back on the table. Okay. It's interesting because they actually have some some uh, really interesting play um, with uh, with acolytes, and I hate to even like affirm that. Like, I hate to even like voice that because I hate acolytes. But no. acolytes themselves are wizards as well, and so when mm -hmm. you're trying to jam as many wizards as possible into a list, the fact is is you can actually sprinkle a bunch of these acolyte units in. Um, yeah, as screens or whatever, and they all count for your wizard wizard count as well. Yeah, um, but transient form is still shit. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, yes. I am not affirming transient form at all. Let's <laughs> I, be very. I just clear. wanted to. I just wanted to double check that. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. Still bad. Still bad. Transient form. Still bad. But but if you're going for the tactic to maximize his angor, um, like they actually are a really interesting 120 point wizard. Yeah. yeah, Autumn, it's not spin, buddy. Oh. This is like my legitimate experiences in playing a couple games with them and having good experience. And I trust Anil. Like, you know, you got you got it in the chat right above you of what's happening. Like, it's these guys, this is the experiences we have with them. I don't know what else to share, buddy. If I thought they were crap, I'd tell you they're crap. That's, that's I've said many times in this yeah. review that I think there are some crap units in here. We're about to go to one. <laughs> I, think, I think they used to be crap um, in the old book. Uh, they were good in Z, sorry, in uh, Beasts because you can rally them on four plus, and yeah. you have twenty of them, and you go in, you kill a model from the middle of the unit, then you just resurrect them all. It's just yeah, it was a hilarious list, and I enjoyed playing it. But like, this is just, it does what it does. It just you send it in, and it just does it. It's just really nice. You don't need any uh, any tricks or anything here. Well, you need some magic support, but it just does stuff. And some destiny nice to rig the run and rig the charge. And yeah, yeah, but like you can layer it's, onto it's, it as you like. Or it's you how it's supposed to work, it. rather than rather than working around something that is just added on to the army like a beast. Yeah, the, the internal balance between the demon half and the um, arcanite half is is greatly improved. I'd say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do want to mention. I do want to mention that. These fifty-three attacks will have two rent turn three in beasts. So that's something. Yes, that is something. Uh, yeah, I mean, hey, look, there's what it is. Um, okay, acolytes. Um, I still don't like them. I still don't think they're any good. Anybody who, who has a different opinion? Yeah, there is one change that they made, and it's mm. so. The unit is about the same, but they improved the profiles a bit, like the Dangles one, right? So the two weapons, even though there isn't really enough of them in, in the in the mm -hmm. box. But two weapons are better because they are extra attack and threes and threes, right? So that's neat. Um, the other change they made, and this is like <clears throat> why they increased the points for them, because it's like, I have no idea why else, if that was a mistake. So they have removed the restriction for stacking rent on top of each other. So before they used to say that you can't benefit from this ability more than once. Yeah. Now you can have a unit of 30 and you can have another couple of units or as many as you want, really. Uh, and you can all stack up to infinity rent with um, the unit of 30. And then you can uh, teleport them with a bridge or if you... Um, really want to be, squeeze them in, uh, you can actually fit 30 around the launch on. And then you can move them around. But you need like a proper special uh, prey for template. it because yeah. there's like there's like that much space left, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it does fit technically. So yeah, they um, they can output like in Pyrofane Cold or with all of stack uh, with Fight Master you can have 30 attacks, threes and twos, minus a lot of rent, one damage, which is quite insane. But you need half of your list working for it for one turn. Yeah. And then they're going to blow up when they get it charged. I mean, you can charge Isn't... with them, and they'll have like uh, 60 attacks, twos and okay. twos. Okay. Yeah, I mean... I get it. I get the idea here of like, well, they can all cast Gestalt Sorcery, so you can have a you know bunch of dudes sit behind a big unit. And I'm like, I don't know, man. <laughs> this one, I, think, I, I just, this seems like such a wild investment into something that is so fragile. Mm -hmm. Right? I just, yeah. when I think about the meta and how the, the game is right now, these dudes who are automatically battle line all the time, Yep. on a five up save and yep. like yeah they can pull some new it's tricks a trap and yeah they're another wizard mm -hmm. these dudes yep. just feel like the ultimate trap to me like i i agree maybe you could like find some corner case weird use for them but 
boy, oh boy, like the Zangor I buy, because we, we, that's just prima facie on the numbers. Like I had good experience with them already, but when you uh-huh. kick them up to 53 attacks, like they were they were doing work for me in both my games. I, I tended to run like some Zangor battle line units and was having good luck with them. But the, but these guys, I I can't see it. I just can't. I just feel like they're an insta trap where you're gonna have a bunch of dudes and yeah, sure, maybe you get like a cool turn of something happening, but for the most part they just get touched by anything and they get lifted and you lose a ton of stuff. I just like them in, in you know in small sprinkles of a couple of your battle line choices covered. Potentially they could be expert conquerors. They got a built in plus one to cast on the war scroll, that could be plus two with the chicken or the other chicken. Um, mm-hmm. you know, farming some uh summoning points. Uh you know, they're not lighting up the world, but that you know, there's some utility there. I, I agree that the well, leaning heavily into them definitely carries risks. Uh, different see... risks from the from the flamer uh spec in terms of I can cross. see a list uh where you take a unit of thirty, a unit of ten, a unit of ten, and yeah, then you take the them. summoning engine, and then you mm-hmm. take uh, a magister and a console. Right? Mm-hmm. And then you summon engine Blue horrors that you can't retreat from, and then you crossbind lock something. You lock something with blue horrors in the other side of the table, and then you have this block of acolytes that is just blasting them. Right. So that's an idea I'm thinking of. It might work, might not work. It's not my favorite idea. So yeah, I, I feel more excited about, about the enlightened, to be honest, uh, as, as the shooting. Yeah, but like couple of these as a utility chaff down the line. But a unit of thirty I mean, that... is not that expensive, right? So it's it's only three hundred and sixty points, and uh, it's thirty wounds. Three hundred and sixty points is less than the six enlightened. So sorry, six um, skyfires or six enlightened for that matter. So yeah, it's it's it not exactly worth a try. Worth trying, I'd say. Yeah, it's gonna get so for me. I'd be more inclined to run like three units of 10 Zangor and three units of 10 Karak, where mm-hmm. the Zangor are in Bounty Hunters, the Karak are in um, Expert yeah. Conquerors. They're behind my Zangor. They're triggering, so they're farming summoning points, and they're triggering all of the wizard buffs in addition to mm-hmm. all my heroes. And so my three Zangor units are going to have to be dealt with. They're all Bounty Hunters. None of them are battle line. Um, there, you know, so that's 60 wounds there, another 30 wounds of, uh, acolytes behind and all of it's firing off mortals from the Zangor and stuff like that with a hero support castle. Um, like to yeah. me, that's the, like, if you're going to go with Carrick, that's what I would do is I would have them actually supporting Zangor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And be the treasures bombed, uh, thing you can pass off. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I agree. Leaving that. Yeah, and then and then you could, and if you still wanted to, you could dump all all three um, rens into one unit and get you know what uh, eleven shots at neg three rend. Like that's not yeah. terrible. Like it's not awesome, yeah. but it's not terrible. It's, it's very interesting how this uh, army matches up into Nighthawk because there's so much leaning into armor debuffs and extra rend for the purposes of increasing their offense. And on top of that, the Banshees, you know, potentially going to be running yeah. two units of Banshees to protect against um, all those point-and-click debuffs that the, this army is throwing at you and, and you know, six portals here and so on and so forth. So it's going to be but, a really interesting matchup for Night one, I think. But at the same time, you throw out a lot of mortal wounds and a lot of attacks with no rent. So you can just be so, like, okay, my Zangor is enlightened. They stop oh, your uh, stop your discorporate and, uh, yeah. and then 53 attacks. Cool. Survive this. Yeah, something like the Zangor plus the Zangor Enlightened combo really is scary as I'll get out to Night Haunt, right? Because it's just this mass weight of dice with shutting off their discorporate. That does like that will get there. That will do That'll do work. Yes. Yeah. It'll or, it, it will lift them. Or or fifty four streamers. Got sort of counters to each other, which is nice. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. have like 20, 27 mortal wounds and then twenty seven mortal wounds, and you're like, cool, that's uh, all your hex ray, thanks. <laughs> And that brings us to the end, folks. Oh, no, wait, sorry, we got the end of spells. I'm sorry. Endless spells. I almost forgot them. All right, let's move through these quickly. Okay, because I, I, we do need to wrap this up soon. Yes, we um, do. My dogs are going to kill me. Uh, also, I know it's super late for Nico. Um, all right, so Burning Sigil of Zinch. Uh, cast on a five, range of 18. 
So it's got a good range, effectively the, the neutral zone of the board. At the end of the movement phase, roll a dice for each unit within nine inches of this endless spell. On a four plus, that unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. Okay, so hits a bunch of units. On a four up, a bunch of units take D3 mortals. Cool. Okay, cool beans. If any models were slain by this spell before removing the first slain model, the commanding player of the model that summoned this endless spell can add one Zinch Chaos Bond to their army and set up within three inches of the slain model's unit, then remove the slain model. Just to be super clear about what this doesn't do, let's say you've got like three units in range, you happen to kill people out of all three units, you do not get three Chaos Spawn. I just want to be like super clear on that because it's the first model that was slain, that's where you're making the choice, right? Not first model out of that unit. But obviously this is a very powerful endless spell because for the same reasons we talked about the Magister earlier, putting an enemy directly into combat with enemy units is... Uh, super good. It's just super good. So well, I don't not, know not only that, it's a nine-inch bubble of four uh, of D three mortals. Like, yeah, yeah, this it's good is, damage base. This yes. is like a uh, Terminexus that doesn't move, yeah. but a yeah. larger range is what we're talking about here. Also, no. you can put it up defensively and uh, hit your own models to get the chaos spawn if the enemy doesn't come close. If they do come yeah. close and they want to charge you, just put a spawn in the middle of their units it, and they can't charge you. Every movement phase as well. So it's yep, ticking yep. on yours and their movement phases. Yes, at the end of and, the And no matter phase. what, if you use this with your arcane uh, hordes or whatever, a leg arcane mm -hmm. army legion's ability, uh, it's up whether you go first or not. The yeah. weak spot of this now is that is the casting value of five. Mm -hmm. So it's even an army with no buffs to that will be just doing a heroic... Um, dispel at the start of the hero phase and what you yeah. can no longer do with the, with, the, with either chicken is the ability to to remove an endless spell that you cast in the same hero phase yeah so that yeah. prevents you generally from sort of protecting your endless spells particularly like the portal yeah. from um, being dispelled later in your next start of hero can, phase which then yeah. stops you casting it later so you, you can do it with incarnate not. though the incarnate can, can yeah, yeah as always the incarnate uh, combo is definitely all right um there's nope. also uh, a little bit of a, of a thing here that you can put it inside of the ghost mystery and then they can't see it so they can't spell it. so that's another combo that's a good one the the other point is it'd be very nice if this hooked into the battle trait about creating spawn rather than be a sort of freestanding rule that yeah. just isn't consistent yeah it is more powerful. This this version of it is much more powerful mm -hmm. because uh, you basically can put it anywhere within range of the unit, not just that one model. Right. So, yeah. 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 The downside is it doesn't have the instead of being slain wording, yeah. so it doesn't have yeah. those advantages sidestepping <laughs> the, the rally and yeah. you know, mm -hmm. come back to life and so on. So the inconsistency is quite frustrating there. It's felt. Yeah. yeah. I love how they redesigned it. I think this is one of the best redesigns I've seen them do in a long time. Agreed. Like, this is great. I'm, I'm, I love Burning Sigil. I think it's amazing. Uh, Tome of Eyes, look, it's 40 points. I, I understand your point earlier about Cogs, because what Tome of Eyes is doing is it's saying you get to reroll all casting models for the model to summon the Senna spell. That's why you're taking it. Like, I'm not worried about mm -hmm. its extra spell it grants you. It's a little linked thing that happens around and follows your base around and, and whatever, right? Like, it's, it's a little thing that follows you around. The reason I enjoy it is because for... And I, I get your statement about cogs, but I like starting with the guaranteed reroll on somebody. And, you know, I... And plus, I'm not sure how long cogs will be whatever cogs is. Like, cogs feels like one mm -hmm. of those things that could be changed any time out from under you, right? But yeah. but the Tome of Eyes is just there. You start, it's in play. It's this extra little thing. Boom, you've got the rerolls out the gate. No, no fuss, no must, no chance to avoid it. It just is. Right. If you yeah. take the plus nine inch range of spell command trait, then that this is a much better option because you can take those rerolls and then you'll put the sigil out at an extra nine inches so instead of being twenty seven, it's you know, thirty six threat. Um, obviously, you have to cast it in your first hero phase, but um, that's a, a nice synergy there. Yeah, it, it was used before. It stayed exactly the same, so it will be used now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, at forty points, it's not bad. That's my point. It is. It also is the cheapest one. Okay, and then lastly, Demonic Simulacrum. Sure, why not? Uh, casting value of 7. 
in a range of 12 inches. Uh, it is predatory and moves 9 inches, so we're talking about a 21-inch effective threat range. Uh, on a relatively big base, it uses like the cavalry base. You can see it in the picture down below there. After the sudden the spell is moved, roll 9 dice for the closest unit within 6. So now we're up to like a 27-inch threat, but you have to pick the closest unit, which means you can't just like reach over their lines and pick a hero or something. Uh, if more than one unit is equally close, the commanding player can choose which unit to, to roll for. For each 5+, plus, that unit suffers one mortal wound. If it's a wizard, it suffers one mortal wound for each 4+, plus instead of each 5. Okay. Tom, you want this thing's 60 points, by the way. This is the one I don't really like very much. I know you don't. I know you don't. Uh, for me, it like what I like is that it can close off uh, movement lanes and, you know, for that first turn. And it uh, it does damage. Um, uh, and so it can begin to eat through chaff walls. Um, and so it can open up your own charge lanes when you need it to. Um, and so I only like this as part of the auto summoning. <laughs> I don't, you know, like hmm. this is less hmm. interesting to me as a normal cast. This is primarily interesting to me by me being able to choose it as a thing that I put out and then just throw across the table. And, yeah. and then I they can't do anything about it. I was hoping they would redesign it like they did with the sigil because it just doesn't really feel very yeah. interesting. It's like yeah. two lot of changes heads popping out of the portal. You would think it would do something cool. No, it's just, just mortals. Cycle. Yeah, and, and the problem is, like, to, to get the, you know, Red Wizard, you said it can kill a five-wound wizard. Yeah, sure, if they happen to be foolish enough to keep it to be the closest thing to it, mm -hmm. right? Which is, like, it's pretty easy to make sure that can't happen. The downside of the bigger base is, it is, you know, sure, you, it, like, yeah. you can move over them, but they can't land on you. It has to still set up somewhere yeah. where it's legal for the thing to set up, right? Yeah, um, it's not, not like Quicksilver Swords in that respect, where it's a perfect right. sense. It's yeah. quite mm -hmm. similar to the um, Dreadful Visage, the Slanesh one with that nearest unit thing. It's got a, I think it's got a better threat range, but it doesn't have the fight last, so it's similar points. Yeah. yeah Dreadful I mean, Visage is set. Yeah, I could see it happening. I'm sure some people play with it just to test it, but it's it's the one that doesn't sell for me because I, it's like Burning Sigil, Tome of Eyes, Simulacrum. That's how I... That's, mm -hmm. that's my... my rating of how i'd stack the three which is funny because this yeah. is the most expensive one i love how we always have the it's there's they're never pointed to their actual value yeah. in endless spells never no but it's funny like i would consider a world where i run both this and the sigil and then just decide what's going to be most opportune at mm -hmm. the start after setup has happened yeah mm -hmm. i can i can see a world where i use neither yeah. and just right. just run Bridge portal cogs. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, competing, with, it's competing with some strong options. Yeah, and, and I is. agree. I'm playing a fragile hero based army that doesn't like people alpha charging me. I'm picking sigil. Yeah, I mean that that feels like the selling point to me. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Like being able to shut off so much stuff against so many armies is highly valuable. Sure. Because again, because that one doesn't use the silly uh, the, the, the not silly, but the, yeah. the very reasonable rules from the beginning. And you can just like Okay, they remove the guy from here. Who cares? Over on this side, within three inches, here's the thing, and now it's blocked mm. off multiple units in combat. Like it's yeah. just it's wild what it can end up accomplishing. And and the other thing that it does is it de incentivizes a portion of the battlefield. Like don't come at me, don't come mm. at me, bro. Because if you do, your entire army is going to be in range of the sigil, and I'm just going to tick yeah. the three mortals. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I positioned it when I played it. I positioned it in the middle of the battlefield. And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll come near it. I'll kill my own dudes. I don't care. I'll kill Zangor to get spawn. It's value. Um, if you want, come near me and get lots of mortal wounds and spawns in your face. Yeah. And, and then really good interactions with things like proving grounds and so on, where you're already pushing around where the opponent needs to go, particularly if you're going second in the battle round. Yep. Agreed. All right. Now... I couldn't, can't believe I forgot the end of the spells, but now we're at the end. There we go, gentlemen. So that's good stuff. I Like I said, I mean, overall, you know, some good changes. Uh, it's still got a lot of play. I think it's like a, a lot of different options. I do think it feels more like a mixed arms list now where you're going to want to be playing in every phase rather than just I win solely in the hero phase magic, which is good. I think that's a good thing. Um, still has a lot of its very powerful tools. Still has a lot of very 
very synergistic combos for Zinch. You still absolutely need a plan and to be mobile and stuff like that. So, yeah. All right. Well, Nico, Daniil, thank you both, gentlemen. Absolute pleasure. Thank you. All right. It has been yeah, great. Thank you both so much. 100%. All right. For all of you out there, hey, uh, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button. Uh, it's really easy. It just takes like two seconds of your time to click, click. So clicky click for me. It uh, helps other people find the show and we really appreciate it. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, if you want to support the channel, there is a Patreon down below where you can uh, subscribe. It's hobby focused and helps you take your next step on your hobby. Let's say you're really excited about Zinch and you want to get a whole new army painted up. Well, maybe that's the right place for you to find some inspiration and a great community to support you. Uh, don't forget that there is a merch store down there where you can vote your Team Tom or Team Tyler. Uh, at the end of the year, we will total up who is the winner, uh, as usual, through the only way we decide all things in society, which is through capitalism. So, uh, as always, thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate it. And as always, we'll see you next Wednesday.